In a strange and sandy land, a porter fights for his life against a weaker level mob, with him barely managing to win by using an opportunity to stab it from the inside. As the monster falls, the porter gets up and catches his breath, being glad that he can finally use his own strength to defeat a monster. That's when the awakened call him over, as he should be doing his job and collecting the mob drops since he is a porter. Did he think that he would just get to sit around here and do nothing all day? The porter apologizes profusely, and as the awakened turn around, they call him useless, unawakened trash. The world changed completely after the abyss was discovered deep within. The abyss is basically another dimension, where monsters that only exist in fantasy stories exist. After the discovery of this abyss, like clockwork, people with awakened transcendental powers began appearing. With their powers, they were able to explore the abyss and defeat the monsters that were inside. Thanks to all of this, the standard of assessing someone was no longer based on how they are or how much effort they put in their work. It was all based on one's awakening rank. If one's awakening rank was high enough, they were basically guaranteed a pretty good life. However, that doesn't apply to him at all. He is a porter who only carries around the cargo of the awakened and an unawakened that hasn't opened his status window in the 35 years of life that he lived. As long as he does not awaken, he will never be able to leave a comfortable life. As he turns around to say that he looted all of the bodies, the porter is shocked to see that all of the awakeners have died in gruesome fashion. But when he tries to back away, he bumps into something, or someone, who says that it appears there is only one left. This is the SSS ranked monster, Asmodeus. Out of desperation, the porter tries to defend himself with his dinky knife, but with a single motion, Asmodeus blasts his hand away, which makes him fall and scream out in pain. Even so, he does not give up. But unfortunately for him, Asmodeus is eons away from him in terms of power, so he stabs him in the head with an ability and slowly digs it deeper and deeper. As the porter dies, he wonders if this is truly the end. His parents passed away in a tragic car accident. At school, he was bullied without end, and all of his life, he lived ignored and alone, only because he wasn't awakened. He was a loser, but even still, even in these last moments, he still wants to awaken. As his blood starts falling to the ground, one single drop transforms into a light of other colors as the porter is transported somewhere else. Since the awakening conditions have been met, he is dragged to a golden stairway where a mystical being descends. The porter attempts to make sense of all of this, and when he looks behind, he sees Asmodeus, who seems to be stopped in a moment of time. The being is surprised that he is still focused on Asmodeus after everything, which makes the porter ask who he is. The being says that even he doesn't rightly know, as some call him king, but he should not worry about that, as he will graciously bestow authority upon him from this moment forth. The porter is lost in his words. King? Authority? Just what is this being talking about right now? The king, almost as if reading his mind, says that it's to be distrustful. But the reason he chose him is because he admired his will and tenacity. Even in his final moments, he wished for more. However, he should think of this as a one-time thing, as this type of miracle will certainly not happen again. The porter still doesn't get what's going on and tries to ask the king, but he says that he will have to be patient as a day where he will understand everything shall come. But until then, he will have to thrive on his own, his precious key. As a flash of light appears in the porter's face, he is awoken in another place, where some people call him crazy for ignoring them like this, up until one slaps him, which awakes him from the confusion. He is met with a face that he didn't believe he would have seen again, Bae Hyuksu. As Taehyun wonders what this bastard is doing here, who made his life a complete hell, Hyuksu continues to slap him and ask why he's not answering. Is he trying to make him mad? That's when he remembers what the king said about authority and opens up his stat window, something he has never seen before. He also notices that he is 19, which means that he regressed to 16 years ago. But if this is true and not a hallucination, it means that what the king did worked. He starts laughing out loud, making Hyuksu wonder if this bastard officially lost it. But when he asks if he wants an even bigger beating, he is met with a ferocious punch that sends him back. With tears in his eyes, he officially announces that he is an awakened too now. As he wipes the tears on his face off, Hyuksu's friends, who are also awakened, start attacking him. They will teach him a lesson in manners. One tries to hit him straight in the face, but Taehyun dodges this and hits him with an uppercut before kicking the other friend who is trying to unleash some ice magic out of the way. For the 35 years that he lived as an unawakened, he did everything he could to survive. From physical training and techniques, to all the known information about the abyss and its monsters, 
He even mastered every interpersonal combat skill there is, so there is no way that he will lose against these weaklings, who don't even know the even most basic fighting techniques. He takes them out once again with his expert skills, but this time they fall for good. As Taehyun stands above them, he notices that he will have to redo his physical training routine if he wants to create a fighting body. Hyuksu slowly gets up from his unconsciousness and thinks that this is nonsense. Is he awakened? He just got lucky, but he will be sure to cripple him so that he never walks again. With that, he activates his stone skin ability, which strengthens the body. He tries to punch Taehyun with his rock-hard fist, which proves to be challenging to dodge, as his attack speed has also increased. As he dodges another attack, he is caught by surprise, as Hyuksu jumps high into the air and tries to smash him completely, with an attack that would have most likely killed him. As the dust from the attack clears, Taehyun tries to take him by surprise from behind, but unfortunately Hyuksu notices and just turns around as he hardens his face, something which blocks his attack completely. Taehyun tries to defend himself from the incoming attack, but even with his blocking, he is still sent flying into the ground, which makes him bleed, although he is still conscious. As Hyuksu approaches, he tells Taehyun that he shouldn't have acted up, but now he probably came back to his senses, right? He should realize now that he is a slowly unawakened piece of trash. What is he even going to do now? Run away? Or perhaps try to fight with his awakened skill if he even has one? Taehyun thinks that all awakened possess a skill and a rank, starting from F rank, which is basically the same as a normal human, all the way up to S, which at that point, monstrous abilities appear. Unfortunately, what Taehyun possesses is a skill that is unknown, that he has never heard of before even with his knowledge, but worst of all, it's F rank. There is no way that he has a chance of winning against Hyuksu, who has a C rank skill. However, for some odd reason, he doesn't feel like he's going to lose, ever again. As his red aura starts permeating through the area, Hyuksu becomes scared, as he can't believe that the lowly Taehyun is really awakened. Taehyun feels like his body has been invigorated, and he can feel magic now. Is this the power of the predation skill? Hyuksu charges in once again, this time with much more rock skin on him, as he wants to take Taehyun down in one blow so as to not risk his own life. Before his attack can even reach, Taehyun puts his hand forwards, and a strange dark being appears above them, with the predation skill slowly starting to consume Hyuksu's rock skin. Taehyun removes his ability with even greater will put into it, eventually eating all of it, as the rocks fall from Hyuksu's body. Everyone in class just chats like normal, and as if nothing has happened, but that's when the sky is colored in a dark red light from Taehyun's ability. After the dust clears, the results reveal themselves. Hyuksu was utterly defeated, and is now on the ground. As a result of his successful predation, Taehyun's rank changes to E, and he also gains a new skill, the same one Hyuksu had, Stone Skin. After their squabble, Taehyun decides to drag all of the guys he beat back to the school infirmary, with the nurse being rightfully shocked to see that all of them are extremely injured. After the fight ended, everyone was taken to the school clinic by Taehyun with the nurse and her healing abilities being able to treat all of their injuries quite well. Naturally, he lied to her about how they got the injuries, explaining that they fell down the stairs, which she was naturally confused by, but let it go, as it probably isn't in her pay grade to be asking questions. Now that he is fully healed, he can go home, but he must say this is great, as he got revenge on his childhood bully and also awakened at the same time. What a treat. However, there is a problem in all of this, that problem being predation. His rank, who he barely managed to change after committing years and years to training, increased after one fight. The skill may be F rank, but it sure is more powerful than a C rank skill. It can even steal the skills of the opponents he defeats. But why did that king guy grant him this type of power? And more importantly, why did he make him regress? He has countless questions that need answering, but the most important thing he must do now is find out more about predation and how it works. He gets back home, which makes him smile, as after his parents died, he stayed with his uncle for a while and they all welcomed him warmly into their family. He gets inside, thinking that the uncle will come back late from work, so he should go ahead and research similar skills to this one. As he walks around the house, however, he notices three goons standing above Jia Young, the uncle's kid. Taehyun wants to ask him why he's not at school, but that's when he notices that he's going through his father's cash. Even before his regression, he still remembers the time when this brat wanted to hang out with the other bullies and took all of the money in the house for it, which caused quite a large fuss around the house. To think that this would happen today, of all days. The boss of the bullies stands up and is surprised to see Young's cousin home so early. But why doesn't he just take a walk? He certainly doesn't get involved in this. They will just take what they are here for and leave. So he should act like the good little unawakened that he is, and walk away. Taehyun just looks at him, but then smiles. 
as this is the perfect opportunity for him to test things out. He suddenly punches the bully boss straight in the face and puts him to the ground, making the others quite surprised. With that, Taehyun moves on by using predation which scares the bully boss. But when he tries to activate the skill, it tells him that the main function is inaccessible at the time. The boss is confused about what he's doing, but Taehyun is even more so, as he can't believe that predation didn't activate. The boss punches him away while he is confused, calling him a crazy bastard while he's at it, and then him and his goons unleash a flurry of spells on him. One unleashes bind, another poison and the boss bleed. These three status effects fly towards Taehyun, who can't hope to react as they hit him all at once, filling the whole building with light. After that, the boss asks how he dared to fool them by acting like an awakened. He brought this upon himself. What a dumbass. Unfortunately, this is not over yet, as the usage of their skills has been sensed by predation, which confirms the use of all of the status effects and resists them, due to a mysterious power. Taehyung laughs, as this technique didn't work, yet it neutralized their skills as it pleased. How interesting. Before the boss can even wonder what's happening, Taehyun engulfs his fist with rock skin and punches him so hard he breaks the floor. After Taehyun wipes the floor with the bullies, he thinks about what he learned. He can now use the status window even better than before, which shows the general information of the respective awakened, but not everything is displayed. Firstly, his mana was not lacking at all, yet predation did not activate, so aside from its normal description, there must be other factors besides mana that allow the ability to be used. Besides this, the passive effect of the skill also isn't mentioned anywhere, as it resists and neutralizes skills related to abnormal conditions, such as what he was hit with previously. Well, he will have to confirm all of this with more on the field research to test if it's true, but most importantly now, he has to take care of something else. He asks Young, who is bowing down to him, what he's doing. Young immediately responds, after seeing such an impressive spectacle from him, he has been deeply touched, and he reflected on his actions. He now begs for his humble forgiveness, just this one time. Whether it is licking his shoes like a dog or meowing like a cat, he will do whatever he wants him to do. Taehyun is surprised. He knew that this guy was a fox even back then, but to think it would be to this extent. Well, this is not today's issue though, as there is another incident that will happen today, something much bigger. He forgives Young, who is very happy, but under one condition, as they must go together to do something. At a warehouse, which has now become a restricted area, three awakened look at the abyss gate, which is broken, and now tons of monsters are pouring out. This is a phenomenon where monsters appear just as a path to the abyss opens up too. If left unattended for too long, like this, a gate break will occur. The man says that it's been ten whole years since the last dungeon break, but this gate was created and broke at the same time, which is very strange. The blonde woman notes that judging from the monsters, if they do not do anything, the monsters will continue to pour out and eventually overwhelm them. The red-haired woman asks if they shouldn't evacuate the neighborhood, but the man tells her it's fine, as they have his skill barrier which is B rank. Additionally, this is only a lowly C gate, meaning that the strongest monster that will come out of this gate will be only C rank. Even if they break through, like they did just now, they are more than enough to deal with all of this raffle, since they are B rank awakened. As Young and Taehyun run across the city, he explains to Young the situation, with him wondering if it shouldn't be okay, since the control personnel are already there to save the day. He keeps calling him sir after every sentence, which makes Taehyun tell him to drop it, but he is correct. The gate breaks mana estimate is around C rank, so with the control personnel who are B rank, there shouldn't be any issues, and this event will be without casualties. Young notes that this is exactly what he's been saying, but Taehyun says that this is only if that dungeon really is C rank. Back at the gate, the awakened defeat the various monsters that appear, but the man thinks that it's strange, as weak monsters like these ones shouldn't be piercing through his barrier so easily. That's when he thinks that perhaps, the mana coming from the dungeon might actually be of a higher rank. The women call him over, as something big is coming out from the gate. Sure enough, a large beast comes out, and with a single scream it breaks the barrier entirely. The giant ogre, which is rank A, laughs, as he knows that these weaklings will have their lives taken. The man can only be shocked, as he didn't expect for the dungeon to be A rank, but after thinking that, a sudden explosion occurs, seemingly taking them out. Young asks Taehyun how he would know all of this, as it doesn't seem like there are any monsters around, and there was no evacuation order from the government. Taehyun can't tell him that he regressed, so he tells him that it was just intuition, which Young doesn't accept as an answer. But that's when they arrive at a road where people are running from monsters, announcing that a gate has broken. Young doesn't even know what to say, 
As nothing indicated that this would happen, Taehyun tells him to go and do the thing that they talked about as he has other plans, more specifically to get rid of these bastards. At the largest skyscraper in the city, a man tells someone that the situation has escalated far beyond their control, as a gate they thought to be only C rank has turned out to be A rank, and that gate has unfortunately broken. No reinforcements are possible, as other awakened are busy with the exploration of the abyss. So now, the only solution is for an A ranked awakened to appear. He is their only hope for survival. So he asks for help from him, the Blade of Lunacy, An Hyun Su. With tears in his eyes, he tells everyone to hang in there, as the hero named Hyun Su is coming to save them. This guy's specialty is that he has 8th grader syndrome. Back on the street, Taehyun is easily taking care of the lower ranked monsters, who prove to be no challenge. He also uses predation on them, which consumes all of their bodies in a split. As he presumed, the reason why predation didn't activate earlier is because of fatigue, as if he passes 70% fatigue, the skill will not activate. Most skills don't do this, and only use mana, but even with the other skills, Fatigue is still an important stat to look after, as the higher it gets, the lower the power becomes, and the heavier one's body gets. It is rather unfortunate that he has to take so many things into consideration, but he also found out that if he absorbs the dead monsters, he can recover mana without using mana. Additionally, as he continues to do this, his rank also increases, with his skills also gaining ranks and becoming stronger. With this constant growth, he might even be able to become an SS rank, or even higher than that the first SSS rank to ever exist. After he is done clearing out the monsters, Taehyun thinks that he should go back to Young and see how the situation is. But that's when he notices someone in the distance, who is fighting a red ogre, but is also monologuing. He tells the ogre that he will pay for the people he killed, and on this day, the great warrior of justice, An Hyun Su, will judge him for his actions. Taehyun is not impressed by his act. Hyun Su continues to fight the ogre, which proves to not be a challenge to him, as he cuts it up in tons of small pieces, and also creates a yellow explosion with his abilities. Taehyun is surprised at how easily he defeated that monster. This must mean that this awakened is the one who solved the gate break situation before he regressed. The Blade of Lunacy Hyun Su. He is just as strong as advertised. He is also just as dumb as advertised, since he acts like he's playing a superhero in some action movie. But why is he here in the first place? As before he regressed, he knows that he had a pretty bloody battle with a gigantic ogre that was on the other side of the city. As Hyun Su prays for the citizens that were lost to find peace in the afterlife, Taehyun's skill activates as it has sensed a skill. Sure enough, someone decloaks from behind Hyun Su and stabs him directly in the chest, which seems to be a crazed lunatic, who is glad to have finally caught the famous Hyun Su. In a shopping complex, Young looks after the school nurse who has passed out, but wonders if this truly is okay. He remembers what Taehyun told him. That tonight, tons of people will pass away. One of those people will be their school nurse, Na Young, because she will be focusing on rescuing other people rather than evacuating to save herself. He knows that he can put people to sleep using his sleep skill, so he should put her to sleep and drag her to a safe space, as he will be handling the rest. Young can only wonder how Taehyun knows all of this, but after thinking a while, he comes to a conclusion. Certainly, this must be why. There's no other explanation for it. Taehyun is actually a future seer. He awakened with that skill. That's so cool. He could go crazy from it. Anyways, if he knows that much, nothing in his plan can go wrong. Taehyun thinks that something is very wrong with this situation, as this didn't happen before. Hyun Su demands the identity of the man who stabbed him, but the man doesn't say. He is just surprised that he survived after being stabbed in a critical spot. Truly, A ranks are a different breed. However, this will make his hunt much more fun, as he likes the ones that put up resistance. This is the B-ranked villain Sangdo, with the stealth skill. The awakened who commit crimes using their abilities are called villains, and this one in particular is a maniac, who during the gate break, went around everywhere and murdered for his own enjoyment, but he is sure that he shouldn't be here. Did the future change because of his actions? Hyun Su calls him an evil bastard, that he will righteously take down with his own two hands. As he charges in, the monster they were standing on starts to rumble, as it hasn't been defeated just yet, and it wants to get up. This throws both Sangdo and Hyun Su away, with Sangdo noting that the ogre's regeneration ability is truly amazing, as expected of an A rank beast. The ogre punches the ground, separating them, but Sangdo wasn't going to fight it anyway, as he will leave it to Hyun Su. However, his hunt won't stop here, as he noticed this dear spectator a while ago now. With that, he charges Taehyun, as he believes that he will be an extremely easy target. In response, 
Taehyun makes his face rock hard and calls him a moron. This blunder allows him to kick Sangdo straight in the chin, who isn't that amazed by him, even though he is awakened. That's when Taehyun reveals everything about him, including that he is a murderer and that he has a stealth skill. But this is great, as he always wanted one of those. They begin trading blows, with their dance of attacks creating electrified gusts of wind. Sangdo laughs, as it seems he is skilled enough to be that confident. Who knew that a blade would be completely useless against him? He doesn't know how he knows about him, but he must be thinking that he will win, since his attacks aren't working. However, unfortunately for him, things will not go as planned. That's when Sangdo disappears completely using his stealth. But Taehyun stands confident, as this will not change the fact that he can't damage him. He tries to punch where he feels Sangdo is, but misses, allowing Sangdo to attack once again, with an attack that actually goes through. He begins laughing, as he has hunted many people like him, those who make mistakes only because they think of themselves as invincible. With his weakness now exposed, he will get flustered and eventually die. He better keep something in mind before he dies, however. All skills have a weakness. He strikes Taehyun once again, who didn't expect for Stone Skin to have this kind of flaw. The skill isn't actually blocking the attacks, as the shock breaks the stone, with the crushed part being replaced by a formation of lower quality stone that breaks easily. This murderer was aiming for this all of this time. As he expected though, he is positive now that a hand-to-hand -hand fight is still doable even against a higher ranked opponent, so his physical abilities are also increasing. He says that it's about time he wraps this up, which makes Sangdo laugh as he goes in again, as this boy must have been driven mad from desperation. Taehyun asks if he knows why he wanted them to meet, but Sangdo thinks his blabbering, up until Taehyun unleashes predation, and says that he wanted his skill. Sangdo can't believe how wicked this mana feels. Was this bastard hiding this all this time? However, even with this ability, he won't be able to do anything with it if he doesn't see him. Taehyun says that he told him that all skills have a weakness, and that includes his. He realized something after eating the monsters. Even among the monsters, countless of them escaped his sight, but not a single one truly escaped. Predation hunted them down without mercy. So it doesn't matter where he hides now, as Predation already has his scent. Sangdo can only scream as the skill touches him and cuts him into bits, with Taehyun taking his skill for himself. Morning eventually arrives, with Hyunsu on the ground, defeated. He thinks that if it wasn't for the villain, he would have been able to do something, but it seems that even the invincible warrior cannot defy death. The giant ogre inches closer to him, ready to take his life, but when it punches the ground, Hyunsu isn't there anymore, as Taehyun, who has used his new invisibility skill, has rescued him. After everything is done, Taehyun goes back with Young to their home, with his uncle and aunt being very glad to see them both, as they thought something bad happened because they found the house completely ravaged. But Young assures them that nothing of consequence happened, which Taehyun can't confirm nor deny. In the news, it is revealed that, as of this moment forth, the gate break warning has been lifted. Due to the chance of another subsequent outbreak occurring, the government has closed schools for a week. And as news regarding the survivors keep coming in, Concerned families and spouses breathe a sigh of relief. The awakened, who managed to survive the whole ordeal, are still in the hospital, and the school nurse details to the police how she inexplicably appeared in this place. Hyunsu, who is showered in attention because of reporters, announces that he was not the one who took down the gigantic ogre. The true hero is somebody else, somebody with a true heart. Even with this good news, the ogre's corpse has not yet been discovered and the whereabouts of the villain who was reported to be attacking the public are still unknown. Thus, people are concerned that the safety precautions put in by the government may not be sufficient enough. Taeyun watches all of this on his phone at night, and stops, as he heard enough. He did so because he wanted to find out if there is any information about him, which there isn't. So he's glad about that, but now, it's time for him to advance to the next level. He opens his stat window, which shows that he now has three skills. Getting the stealth skill really was a good thing for him, but with his current powers, it's too hard for him to use all of these three skills at once. If he recklessly charges in, thinking that he can defeat anything, he will run out of mana in no time, and if he also gets the fatigued status effect, his life may as well be over. The best measure he can take against this are potions, that can recover both mana and fatigue respectively. However, they are not that easy to obtain, as they are pretty expensive, so he must hunt to earn that cash. One needs to have a legal permission to hunt, even using skills requires a permit, otherwise it's considered illegal. All of this leaves Taehyun with a single choice, to explore the undiscovered dungeons. As he enters the dungeon, the B-rank Spider Sisters wonder how a lowly human found them, as they were pretty well hidden. But no matter, as they will paralyze him, 
and feast on his blood. Taehyun is surprised that they are intelligent enough to talk, but they are only B rank, which isn't enough to change his rank with just a few. Does he have to eat hundreds for that? The sisters think that he is being truly arrogant. This human does not realize the position he is in. In unison, they all spit out balls of web at him that combine to create a bigger attack. The sisters laugh at Taehyun as the ball flies towards him, as he will suffer a fate worse than death. But Taehyun just smiles, as the web is a stat effect, which predation easily takes care of. The spider sisters are quite surprised and actually try to reason with him, but their blood-curdling screams can be heard from inside of the train passageway, as Taehyun consumes all of them. With that, he also gains a new skill, paralysis. At the new South Korea Player Association, some pretty important people are having a meeting behind closed doors, with the deputy manager, Taewook, thinking that he can't believe he's meeting two of the association's best players. This term player is basically an awakened who is permitted by the law to use their skills for various objectives and abyss explorations. This includes dungeon clearing and the like. Currently, there are five player centers of the new South Korea Player Association. Out of these, four are a part of the four great guilds, the largest guilds ever. The fighters, undivided, the crafters, alchemists, the mages, magicians, the informants, nightwalkers. Additionally, there is also the authorized agency that manages players, including the four guilds. The new South Korea Player Association. Right in front of Taewook, there are two amazing players. The guild master of the Nightwalkers and an S-rank player, Yu, and the chairman of the new South Korea Player Association, also an S-rank player, Ji Jin Hui. He asks Yu if she found out anything about the Malignant Guild. The Malignant Guild is an organization of criminal fame formed by the most brutal villains. The guild members wear gold rings with three skulls carved on them to represent where they are from. Yu gives him a paper containing the movements of that guild along with a list of players they are targeting. But she is sure that he didn't call her over just for this document. So what is this truly about? Jinhui laughs and says that actually he wanted her opinion on something. He asks when she took the player test, which she responds with 19 years ago, though she still remembers it pretty clearly. She seems to understand what he's trying to ask and Jinhui asks her directly, does she think that a high school student could rival a monster in a one-on-one -on -one fight? Taehyun, who defeated everything in that undiscovered dungeon, now has a backpack full of gems. So he calls the Alchemist Guild as he wants to buy some potions off of them. The seven-day school closure order eventually came to an end. What Taehyun did in those seven days was physical training, dungeon clearing, and of course, peddling with the Alchemist Guild. When he first presented them with so many mana stones, they were shocked and treated him like a special VIP. Thus, he was able to get a lot of potions. Besides all of this, his stats also increased by a little, but his rank is still C. He has a long way to go, however. He still has to go to school, unfortunately. Every single one of his classmates are surprised by his sudden change in attitude, and they also heard rumors that he beat Hyuk Su and his friends to a pulp, meaning he must have awakened too. One says that whatever happened, he is in real big trouble now. As with things escalating to this level, someone he doesn't want to ever mess with will certainly show up and flex his prowess. That person being Lee Jung Jae, who just came into the classroom. The reason he has so much power is because he is an S ranked awakened. Jung Jae is the third generation child of the Taesun group, a conglomerate that sponsors the Taesun school, and he is also the boss of all of the bullies in here, as well as the bastard, the filth who ordered Hyuksu to bully him, only because he was unawakened. Jung Jae asks Taehyun how his old friend has been doing, but Taehyun laughs. Old friend? A damn bastard like him? He should cut the nonsense and get out while he's being nice. One of Jung Jae's lackeys asks how he dares to talk to the boss in such a disrespectful manner. But that's when Jung Jae punches him and asks if he's blind. Did he not see that they were having a damn conversation? He moves back to Tai Hyun, saying he understands he might be thinking he's powerful and out of the mud because he beat Hyuk Su. However, he should be more careful, as he is certainly not at the level to talk back. Taehyun feels his burning mana all over, which indeed is all quite amazing. But this only makes him wonder, how will that power compare to predation? Before he can activate his ability and gain a new one, a classmate comes around and stops him and his goons from continuing this. This girl is Lim, who also tells Taehyun to stop what he was trying to do, as she saw it. Lim has many titles. Class president, the young lady of a rich family, an S-ranked awakened, a model student, so on and so forth. She is actually expected to gain even more titles soon enough. But one problem with her is that she does not compromise, like at all, and she never backs down. Jung Jae tells her that she must be confused about something, as they were both just having a friendly chat about some things, nothing to worry about. Lim says that there was nothing friendly about what she saw, as what about his friend who he just punched in the face? 
Jung Jae gets mad now and tells her to watch her tone, as she has said enough. Lim tells him that if he's not going to leave of his own volition, she will be using force, so he should walk away while she is still feeling nice. Taehyun thinks that if this keeps going on, the entire classroom will become a medley of ice and fire. But after Jung Jae and Lim give each other deadly glares, he decides to leave, as he had no intention to fight in this place anyways. That was a trick, however, as at the same time he turns around and tries to unleash an attack, while noting that he won't allow this type of disrespect. Before any of them can activate their abilities, the school speaker dings, as there is a special announcement from the broadcasting club. A special lecture has been organized by the player association in the main hall, so all of the students are expected to come there immediately. As Young Jae hears this, he rethinks his actions and looks at Lim, who is still ready for battle. He smiles, and as he leaves he says that he sure got lucky, but he wonders how much that will last. He closes the door behind him with a loud thud, so Lim turns around and asks Taehyun if he's alright, but he's not even there, as he is in front of the doorway already, noting that they should go too, since it's the player association they are talking about here. Lim is extremely confused by his confidence. Was he really always like this? At the main hall, the students wonder why the player association is here, with some speculating that it's because of the gate break. Eventually, the lecture starts, with Taewook introducing himself first. He says that today he is here for two reasons. One is to apologize for the lack of response from the player association, as they were not quick enough to act on the gate break. But the second reason is to inform them of the changes to the player tryouts, for those of them who have awakened and will be the future of this country. Jung Jae is still mad about Taehyun, with Lim thinking that she should ask him about the situation after this. The different students wonder what this has to do with them, as the player tryouts start at the age of 19 after all. Taewook says that they are correct or were correct, but he wouldn't be informing them about it if it wasn't important to them too. Due to the recent gate breaks and the large rise in the number of dungeons and monsters alike, the player organization has become understaffed. With this in mind, from now on, they will allow tryouts even for high school students. The students are pleasantly surprised by this, with Taewook continuing. Nominees from each school will be chosen based on some factors, such as ability assessment score, academic record, and behavior. Taehyun smiles, as what this guy is spouting out right now are pure lies. These tryouts will be open to high school students, sure, but the selection process is already underway, without anyone knowing about it. That is done through Taewook's skill, the observer's eye which stands above everyone without a single person noticing. This skill is able to quantify the sum total of the subject's power. Upon focusing, it even allows the user to view the stat window of the respective target. Taewook uses this ability and notices that this school will certainly produce better results than other schools. They will all make great players, but among all of them, these two are the most awestrucking. Jung Jae with a total score of 1924 and Lim with a score of 2335. The Nightwalkers did in fact give him a list of recommended people to check out, but he can't believe that there are so many untrained Awakened who could potentially be the most powerful they have ever seen. While thinking of how to write the recommendations for them, Jung Jae suddenly raises his hand up. He notes that, if he is here to inform them about player handouts, aren't some candidates already for that? Meaning that the player tryouts are meant to assess Awakeners who are suitable to be players, so he doesn't believe that an unawakened person should be among them. He knows too that strength is not all that makes a player. Whether it's the rank of awakening, ability to work under pressure and vast knowledge of the abyss and its creatures. To become a true player, a number of complex skills must first be acquired. But in the end, all of these complexities come back to the awakened. So an unawakened has nothing to do here, right? Taehyun scoffs at him. Is he willing to go this far only to find out if he's awakened or not? Jung Jae is doing just that, as he wants to see for himself. Lim tries to make him stop but then thinks that Taehyun will just become rude because he doesn't want her help, so she sits this one out, as she doesn't care anymore. Jungae asks Taewook to just send the unawakened out of here, but even if he gets what he's saying, it's up for the student to decide if they want to attend or not. Jungae asks Taehyun how he's not humiliated, as he must be dreaming about becoming awakened. Or perhaps, he just doesn't care about the tryouts? Taehyun just smiles. Does he think that is actually possible? Sure, without proving himself as awakened, he can't get a peek at the tryouts. But to get recommended, he really doesn't need to show his powers. Taewook thinks of Jung Jae as pathetic, since he is bullying others. But what does he have with Taehyun, as he is just an unawakened with unknown latent rank? A pitiful existence, truly. That's when he tries to analyze him, but it just doesn't work, surprising him quite a bit. Taehyun says that he's right. He really was thoughtless when he came here. 
What use would it be for a lowly, unawakened person such as him to attend a lecture like this? It would only hurt his pride after all, so he will get out of this shitty place himself, without his help. They can stay cooped up in this den and keep praising each other. Jung Jae is very mad at him now, as he probably has never been flipped off before. Tae Wook is still amazed that his ability didn't work on that boy. As this wasn't a problem with anyone, not even the chairman or you, this never happened before. Yet that boy is defying all the rules. Before he walks out fully, Taehyun stops and looks directly at Tae Wook, who notices his true power and the figure next to him. After that, Taehyun goes to the library and starts reading books to maybe figure out more about the king. But that's when Jun Jae's goons come and tell him to come with them, as the boss is looking for him. Taehyun asks what happens if he refuses this, so the goons threaten him with his aunt's restaurant. This is a straight message from Jung Jae, so he shouldn't take it the wrong way. He is an orphan, an extremely athletic one, so does he really want to give his aunt a hard time when she is already seeming to struggle in her business? Before he can mutter another word, Taehyun punches him so hard the entire library is in bits and pieces, with him leaving only one of the goons conscious. He will not ask him this twice. Where is Jung Jae? Eventually, Taehyun arrives at the school gym where Jung Jae is, accompanied by an A-rank player and his bodyguard Hundo, who is surprised to see that Taehyun is resistant to a lot of status effects, as he has been trying them on him, but nothing seems to work, indicating that he is at least an A-rank. Jung Jae knew that he actually awakened, but if that's the case, they should have a friendly chat, right? His words really have been crude, but he has no intention of hurting him at all. In fact, he has a proposition for him, one that he cannot refuse. He is actually going to form a guild after he graduates and becomes the heir of his fortune. But even someone as genius as him cannot do anything on his own. Does he understand what he is getting out? What he needs is pure talent, not like that idiot Hyuksu, but real talent. Just like he has. So he should forget about his old plots of revenge and come to work under him, as not only will he give him more wealth and honor than he imagined, but he will also make his family rich. Taehyun thinks that what he just said now is a load of crap, scout, honor and wealth. Unfortunately for him, he crossed a line already, one that he cannot uncross. Jung Jae is shocked at his words at first, but then smiles, as he forgot that dogs like him need to be trained. With that, the fight is on, and Hundo creates a room, a skill which makes a space unable to be detected from the outside. With this, nobody will bother them in their fight, so he can sit back and enjoy the show. Jung Jae and Taehyun punch each other's fists, with Taehyun being pushed back, since Jung Jae has much more power. Next, he kicks Taehyun away with a giant explosion, which makes him spit out blood. Jung Jae laughs, as this dog must finally know where he stands now. Hundo feels kind of sorry for Taehyun, as even though he probably has a high-grade body strengthening skill, and is also an A-ranked awakened, with combat skill and mental power that one wouldn't expect from a student, it's hard for him to find a reasonable opponent. Unfortunately for him, his opponent is someone who is epitome of power, an S-ranked awakened. Taehyun has no real chance of winning, he better give up and learn his place in the world. He will suffer less if he does that. That's when he notices something strange. Jung Jae is actually getting pushed back and hard, to the point where Taehyun throws him around. He thinks that this is impossible. Was the young master really overpowered in a strength competition? As he wonders, Jung Jae screams at Taehyun, demanding to know what he did. As he cannot move, Taehyun stands above him and is glad to see that finally the paralysis is working. Even with Taehyun's three skills, he wasn't able to utilize all of them from the start, as C-rank paralysis can't go through S-rank resistance easily. Stealth will be easily blown away by his flames, and predation shouldn't be used so carelessly. So Taehyun's real objective all of this time was to accumulate paralysis in close combat. Status effect skills have greater effect when dealt up close, so with the damage dealt with the paralysis attacks, even an S-rank resistance will fail. The bodyguard thinks that Taehyun is a genius, as he suppressed an S rank in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. But the fight isn't over yet. Jung Jae apologizes, as he admits that he underestimated him. But there is no way he would lose to a bastard like him. So from here on out, they will fight seriously. He crushes a small purple stone revealing his true power. He starts attacking Taehyun even harder, with him trying to retaliate. But his attacks are immediately caught in a bubble and burned away, exploding afterwards. The bodyguard thinks that this is Jung Jae's true power, the Flame Heart skill, which is S rank. It would be difficult to draw this out normally, but using the mana amplifying stone, which is created by refining a normal mana stone, it's possible. However, this is also a problem. He warns Jung Jae to stop, as he will kill his classmate and he is also in danger. As this much magic power is too much for his age, his blood vessels might burst. In response, Jung Jae aims an attack at him and tells him to shut it, as he is only a bodyguard. 
This bastard dared to humiliate him, so he will not let it slide. He will be punished for his dog actions. With that, he hits Taehyun with an attack that would make a normal person burn to a crisp, and laughs as he thinks that this is over. The bodyguard charges in, as if he actually kills that student. There will be hell to pay. He goes to the hole that Taehyun was put in and tells him to give up and run away, as he will deal with the young master. But in response, Taehyun punches him away and notes that he was the one to pick the fight anyway. How can he back down now? He admits that S ranks are different, so from now on he will also get serious about it. At the player association, the chairman is shocked at what Taewook is telling him, that there are students with that much power level. They are both S ranked awakened, but even so, for untrained awakened to have this, it's something far beyond anything they have imagined. Will they be able to finally challenge the saintists of Japan with this? Taewook looks down and thinks about the saintess, one of the leading players of Japan. She surpassed 2,500 at the ripe age of 19, but even such a monster like that one only surpassed 2,500. So why on earth does Taehyun have 5,096? As he walks away, he thinks that maybe it was a hallucination, but he can't know until he checks it out once again. He must. The bodyguard is shocked at what he sees now, as Jung Jae's power is being suppressed. He doesn't believe it, as he cannot be overpowered by a scumbag orphan like this. He is the heir of a powerful family. He is S rank. He is Jung Jae. Taehyun says that even with his heir status and rank, it does not matter, because what he is facing now is a power that surpasses nobility, the power of a true king. With that, the predation engulfs Jung Jae, and a giant explosion occurs that can be seen from the outside. As Jung Jae slumps on the ground and the bodyguard trembles, Taehyun is quite surprised that he had the courage to jump in front of him. He never expected for him to do this, but it's fine since he got his skill already. The bodyguard asks what he's going to do now, as the young master is still an important person, so the aftermath will be quite bloody. Taehyun asks how he dares to threaten after he was the one that instigated the fight, but he will not cower, not at all. Still, he shouldn't worry, as he doesn't plan on killing him, but he wants something that is worth his life in return. Since he is the heir of such a prominent family, a billion one should do just fine. Everyone from the school gathers around the gym, with Lim thinking the worst, as she recognizes those flames and mana. It's from Jung Jae. She also believes that he was beating poor Taehyun to a pulp, so she passes the nurse and jumps in, as she was wrong. So if something happens to him, it will all be her fault. So she begs anyone who is listening, for Taehyun to at least make it out alive. When she enters the gym, however, she is shocked to see Taehyun alive and well while Jung Jae is passed out on the ground. He is glad that she came as she needed someone to help this bastard out. She can take him to the hospital, can't she? She naturally asks what's going on, but Taehyun says that he must have fallen down the stairs. Anyway, this has nothing to do with him, so he asks her to not tell anyone he was here. As she turns to him to ask more questions, he seemingly disappears in thin air and makes it away from the school in no time. With this done, he can now check what he got. He opens his status window, revealing that his stats increased but he also got the Monarch's Heart ability and 5 Charm from Jung Jae. He is surprised by this as Charm is a useless stat that only celebrities use, but he also got the Monarch Heart instead of the Flame Heart, which allows to boost party members' stats. He thinks that this is an amazing skill, as skills that affect multiple people are extremely rare, and for someone like him who can use multiple skills, the Monarch's Heart will allow him to combine a lot of things. This is far beyond anything he expected. Suddenly, three black cars stop in front of him and Taewook gets out, noting that he has tons of questions for him, but first, he will start with the most important one. What did he do in that gym just now? At Jung Jae's home, his father gets the news that his only son is in the hospital, and the one who beat him is asking for one billion won from him, while also wanting the matter to be dealt with quietly. The bodyguard says that it's precisely so, but he apologizes, as he wasn't able to do anything. The father tells him to fulfill the wishes of that student, as he is quite interesting, but he must also pay for his disrespectful act. As he snaps his fingers, two figures appear, which the bodyguard thinks of as too much, as that is still a student, a child. He can't send these two there. The father tells him to shut up, as he will not tolerate him barking around anymore. This is the s rank player, Lee jung Su, the president of the Taesun group. Taehyun wonders what Taewook is doing all of the way here, but what gym is he talking about? The one that he caused an explosion in, or the incident in the lecture hall where he showed his power? This guy is at the rank of the association deputy manager. The chances of him actually involving himself in a fire so small is minuscule. But what if he is here because he knows that he's the one behind it? Well, he will just have to test him. With that, he asks him if he means the explosion, which Taewook is confused by at first, but then notices a fire behind them, probably his doing. 
but it's all right. Other agencies will rush to take care of that. No need to worry. He wasn't talking about that, as he has not gotten a straight answer from him. Just what exactly did he pull at the gym? Taehyun smiles, as it seems Taewook finally fell into his net. He asks if he doesn't know already, but he must be here to give him an invitation to the player tryouts, it seems. Taewook laughs. Player tryouts? Why would he even say something like that? Taehyun says that if he wants a cause, he will give him one. He starts activating his power, revealing a score of 5,214, and asks if this is enough to please him. Taewook and his associates are amazed, as in such a short time, this student has already grown stronger than before. This means that the number he saw back at the school was no fluke. Kim Taehyun is the real deal. Before he can ask more questions, Taewook asks what happened to his clothes, as they seem rather charred. When Taehyun goes back home, he tells Young about the player tryouts he got invited to, which he is shocked by. So he starts treating him like a king, the god emperor admiral majesty, the great Taehyun. He tells him to stop this mockery, but also thinks that the Taesin will most likely take good care of the gym matter, so that it doesn't blow out of proportion. So that should decrease Taewook's suspicions of him. Anyway, since the tryouts are in a month, he just has to focus on training so that he can be the best there is. Hopefully he will have the time to do that, as he doesn't want any more problems. That's when someone calls him, someone unknown. Unfortunately, outside of his home, the two shadowy figures appear, catching the player that the association put up as a bodyguard for Taehyun, which they are surprised about, but it is also pretty annoying. Well, it's probably because he is a player candidate. Those guys are protected pretty well, since they are future prospects, but not good enough, it seems. This is the two-person assassination unit, the black and white brother. The older body is named Black, an A-rank villain, with the stealth and body strengthening skill. The younger brother, White, a B-rank villain with only the stealth skill, notes that even if he's a prospect, he's just a kid without any real battle experience. So a very easy target for them. Black agrees, they can be called prospects, but without any experience, they are worthless. So they should show him what a true awakening looks like. As he turns to his little brother, he sees that he's getting beaten to a pulp by Taehyun, who got to them before they even notice. Black doesn't know who he is yet, so he charges in while demanding his identity. But Taehyun chooses to answer his question as he throws White out of the way and charges in with a rock-covered knee attack, which hits Black fully. He is the inexperienced kid they were eagerly talking about. A few hours earlier, when Taehyun was still in the gym, the bodyguard was shocked to hear the sum he was asking for, as besides keeping everything silent in this matter, he cannot pull out this much cash on his own. Taehyun already knew that, so since he is not a bastard who holds simple employees responsible, he is just asking him to do a good job at reaching an agreement with his boss. However, just in case he thought of betraying him, he should think otherwise, as they will seal the deal with this. This is an awakened oath, a contract of sorts created using magic. Breaking such a contract will result in a random penalty that is permanent. The conditions of the contract were rather simple. Firstly, along with the compensation of 1 billion won, an effort to clean up this mess will be initiated. Sure enough, this was successful as the news reported the explosion as a simple gas leak with no injuries. The second condition was to inform him of any actions against him for revenge, which he did, as he revealed the location of the brothers to him earlier. Black tries to hit Taehyun with all that he's got, but he keeps dodging and eventually finds an opportunity to strike. But Black is also swift and jumps out of the attack's way, high into the air, allowing him to try and land on Taehyun with force. But he gets out of the way, from behind, Taehyun reveals his identity as one of the assassins that specializes in stealth attacks. But unfortunately, it seems he's only good at that, as fighting skills are to be laughed at. With that, the fight ends with Taehyun's victory. In her limo, Yu talks with the chairman, hearing that she heard that he already chose the participants for the player tryouts, meaning that this will be a gathering of all of the prospects in their country. So who is he looking forward to seeing most? The chairman says that there are tons of remarkable people to choose from, but what he wants to see most is her younger sister, as she has real potential. Yu says that this is to be expected, unfortunately, as that family she is in doesn't tolerate anything worse than that. The chairman says she's as harsh as ever, but who is she looking forward to? She says that she had a general idea, but then she heard something quite amusing. Putting the S-rankers aside for a moment, Taewook personally contacted a student, so she is curious to see that student, as he must be quite skilled for Taewook to go personally. Taehyun tries to use predation on the two brothers, but it doesn't work, 
as he does not have enough physical ability, so he is unable to use predation due to an overload. Eventually, the association members Taehyun called over to deal with the brothers arrived. Noting that these bastards dared to mess with the association, but also with a player candidate, they must pay the capital punishment for their crimes. Taewook thanks Taehyun for telling them about this, but might he know who is behind the attack? Taehyun thinks for a second, and then says that he does not. Taewook then thinks that the list of participants might have leaked, so he has to ask for tighter security in order to keep everyone safe. Taehyun does know who sent the assassins but won't tell, as if he puts the Taesin group in the spotlight, things will only become more bothersome for him. Additionally, that isn't even his main problem right now, as his ability doesn't work. He thinks about it, if he's unable to use it because of physical abilities, then he needs to raise his stats. But the only way to do that is through predation of monsters or others. So that leaves him with only a single option. At the Blackhead Gym, a woman by the name of Yura welcomes Taehyun and Young inside, but then notices that they are children, with Young freaking out at Taehyun. Blackhead is one of the most bougie gyms out there. Only people with money or power are allowed to register here. She tells them that this isn't an average training center, but Taehyun gives her a card and tells her to use this to register two people, an SVIP card from the Alchemist Guild. She wonders where he managed to get this from. Is he the disciple of a high-ranking player or something? But even with this, if she allows them to register, things might become troublesome. That's when a buff man starts flexing as he comes their way. As he has sensed that someone is in trouble, he tells Taehyun that money is not enough to get into a place like this. This man is named Iron Strongman, a B-rank trainer with the muscle augmentation skill. Young thinks that this is an extremely cool name, with the other gym goers noting that it's over for those new kids, as Strongman doesn't let anyone go. He thinks that Taehyun is trembling at his name. But he asks, why is this dumb weak muscle head yapping about? This angers Strongman, who asks if he dared to actually call him weak. Taehyun says that if he doesn't believe it, they should bet on it. The loser pays the winner's membership for a month. Strongman laughs, as it seems that he doesn't know his place. But if that's the case, he will make this bet interesting. They both connect to a virtual reality device, with Young wondering what that thing is, as it looks like the abyss inside. Yura explains that this is a VR program the Virtual Porter, a virtual world that is identical to the Abyss, where competitions are held to eliminate the most B-rank monsters as the contestants race to the finish in the shortest amount of time while carrying their maximum weight. It is most definitely the most popular game to establish the hierarchy in the gym, but that kid can't hope to win against Strongman. Inside of the virtual world, he laughs as he goes through the monsters, as that brat can't ever win against him. His muscle augmentation makes combat easy, his mobility is amazing, and his all-around skill is something that he never could have imagined, not even taking into account the amount of weight he is lifting. Unfortunately for him, Taehyun doesn't play around, and in a few swift movements takes out all of the beasts in front of him. Next he moves on to the others, not stopping at all. Even when he is surrounded, he finds a way to crush all of the monsters into bits, granting him a 999 hit combo. After this, Taehyun notes that he didn't plan to hit this machine for another 30 days, but this is most definitely a way to train considering his maximum weight carry. Anyway, since he won the competition fair and square, he expects Iron Man to pay up and get lost from his face. Eventually, the day of the player tryouts finally comes, with tons of people lining up for the exam. With the association now allowing minors to participate, people of every age and walk of life have to prove their worth. But the awakened they are looking for the most are these talents. The close combat expert, Iron Fist A ranked Hong Junwook. The A ranked druid, who challenges even S rankers, Lee Gilsan. The thunder god of Busan, S ranked Shin Yunbok. The awakened who is rumored to have the best numbers, the S ranked Lim Ah Young, and many other talents are waiting for the exam eagerly. A reporter by the name of Kim Giha from Psy Economy has the objective of interviewing test takers but the line is too long so she thinks that she won't ever make it. She will be lucky if she manages to snap a picture. As she laments, Taehyun appears behind her and wonders how he's supposed to pass all of them. Really, this entire event is a hassle to go through. Seeing an opportunity, Giya reaches for him and asks if she can perhaps interview him. Taehyun makes it to the testing grounds with just one minute before it starts, due to a certain reporter taking a lot of his time, but whatever, as he should think about setting up his image now. Tons of people are gathered in a single room, where eventually, Taehyun bumps into Lim, who's extremely shocked to see him so tall and toned out. He says that this is because he trained a little bit, but Liam thinks that it wasn't a little bit, it was a lot. How can he change this much in just a month? Before she can ask what she did with Jung Jae, 
the test manager welcomes them, as they are the future of their beautiful country. This will be the first test to select the awakened who will become players. So here are the rules. Everyone should have an exam ticket on their chest with their exam numbers. The test is to collect five of them, including their own. In other words, if they do not have their own ticket, they fail. With that out of the way, it's time to start. The time limit is only one hour. All methods are legal except murder. Test. Start. Everyone is surprised by the sudden transformation of the arena. For some reason, a lot of people choose to target Lim first, but the moment they even get close to her, she blasts them away. The association members that are looking at this are amazed. Truly, Lim is a powerful candidate, but they should also look at Shin, who seems to be also wiping out anyone who dares to get close to him. Taewook sits behind them and looks at his own screen. He thinks that their interest is understandable considering the ranks. However, he is the only one who saw those unbelievable numbers. He is sure that Taehyun will go through this test without worry, so he should show them the true power he has been hiding. When he looks at Taehyun, however, he sees him fist fighting with Jungwook, which shocks him to no end. Taehyun and Jungwook continue to trade blows, but Taewook doesn't understand why that A ranked awakened is pushing him back. Did he misjudge his abilities? Why isn't he dodging? That's when he finally gets it. He knows why he's not dodging. As Taehyun charges in once again, Jungwook punches him very hard in the face and tells him to stop looking down on him, as Stone Skin has nothing against its perfect counterpart, Iron Skin. He cannot win if he keeps fighting like this. Taehyun says that he talks way too much, as he isn't doing this just for the thrill. His stats start growing, as even with a month of training the seal on predation was not lifted, because his stats aren't good enough. So the only way for him to increase his stats is to stimulate his body as much as possible, meaning that fighting to the bitter end is the best training method. This is why he still considers this training. With a powerful punch, he finishes the fight and he gets a token. Taewook laughs out loud, as this guy really isn't normal at all. The others look at him as he does this, but he doesn't care. As using this exam as training is so bold, it's sending chills down his spine. However, there will be a problem in the future, as he needs to conserve stamina, target the weaker guys and win. That is a perfect strategy that he is sure Taehyun will do. Unfortunately for him, Taehyun has other plans, as he goes straight for Shin, who now has 147 tickets in his possession. Taehyun tries counting them, but gives up, as he needs only three more to pass. With that, they start fighting, Shin keeping Taehyun light on his feet, but he is also not defenseless. As the moment an attack almost reaches him, lightning zaps away any danger. Shin congratulates him for being so fast, as he couldn't even see through his attacks at first. With a large zap, he pushes Taehyun away, who thinks that he didn't expect for Shin to be so tricky to defeat. Not only does he have the capability to envelop himself with powerful lighting that acts like a shield, he also has enough destructive force to attack in both melee and range situations. Without predation, it will be difficult to even reach him. Suddenly, Shin notes that if he doesn't want to come to him, then he will do so, and charges in with a charged attack that Taehyun deflects, resulting in them trading blows again. But it's clear Shin has the advantage, and eventually catches Taehyun off guard, zapping him hard while noting that he was the one who wanted to fight. So why is he running away now? Taehyun resists the urge to fall unconscious, and tries one final large attack. But Shin just zaps it away, and then flashbangs Taehyun, allowing him to go high into the air and hit him with a devastating array of lightning. As he does that, he laughs, as this guy is still resisting, truly. This is a lot of fun. Everyone was busy running away from him. He thought that Lim would be the only one to challenge him, but he is fortunate enough to have found a fun toy that keeps surviving. As he thinks that, a single rock passes through his attacks and lightning shield, hitting him straight in the forehead. Before he can even wonder how, Taehyun goes behind him and throws a bunch of rocks his way, making him bleed. The stone skill skill is most certainly not the god's fury match. It's far from piercing him. Even at its best, it would just get crushed. However, in this place, the tryout grounds, things are different, as it's made of material that can withstand awakened attacks. So even if it shatters, it will not lose its shape. With all of this, Taehyun decided to use it as a weapon. And with this, it pierced through Shin's defenses, allowing him to end the fight with no resistance. The player association members are amazed to see that a C ranker actually beat an S ranked. Just who is this guy? Taewook is pleasantly surprised, as he seems to be already making tides in people's thinking. But that's when he notices something strange. As Taehyun picks up the tickets and thinks that he can now just wait for the exam to finish, a pillar of ice comes his way. And soon enough, an array of ice that engulfs the entire area he is in appears, creating an orb with no way of escape. Naturally, the only one with ice abilities is none other than Lim, who seems to be hell-bent on eliminating Taehyun. He wonders why she came here and how long she's been watching, but then she suddenly speaks. She believes that with power, 
comes responsibility, as power without that is just mindless violence. She admits that he is strong, but she did not expect that he would take down Shin in that manner. But now that she's thinking about it, he probably defeated Jung Jae in the same way. That's when she starts using her ability, making Taehyun immediately cloak and try to run away, but her attacks splash all around, making his invisibility skill useless. Before he can even turn around to face her again, she closes the gap and kicks him in the face, explaining that when they met at the gym then, she really believed in him. She stupidly thought that he is different from people like Jung Jae, that he would not use his powers purely out of self-interest. But after seeing him fight now, she finally understood that he is just like them, everything that happened with Jung Jae, and here was all his doing. Her attacks continue until they eventually send Taehyun flying. After he falls to the icy ground, Lim says that using skills without authorization is illegal, and she knows he was the one that sent those two to the hospital. Even though he deserves it, she will not report him. In exchange, he will withdraw from this tryout, as he does not deserve to become a player. Taehyun tells her to cut the shit. Who the fuck is she to say that? She couldn't even muster enough courage to end Jung Jae's tyranny, power, responsibility, deserving? When it comes down to it, she was looking for an excuse to eliminate him. He would rather let her use the test as an excuse for this than acting so pathetic in front of him. Lim is shocked by his words, but then says that she understands. If that's his final answer, she will not go easy on him and make him drop out himself. As Taehyun looks at her, he thinks that he cannot use stone skin, since it was already shattered into bits. Stealth will not work here because of the snow. Monarch's heart is already active, but it's not enough. Predation is still sealed and he has no stamina to use paralysis. In the bitter end, he has only one technique left that may turn the tide of battle. He charges in and Lim does the same, with the snow arena shattering. The association members wonder what happened because they can't see yet, with Taiwook eagerly waiting. But when he spots what is going on, his eyes widen, as well as the eyes of the members, who are too stunned to speak. In a successful effort for survival, Taehyun pinned Lim down and kissed her, something which she is also extremely confused about. When he charged in, he jumped over Lim's attack and directly kissed her, but that was only from the looks of it, as he actually used his paralysis skill. Abnormal status effects work better in close range, and if directed inward, they have a much higher chance of success. So Taehyun infused his blood with paralysis and made Lim swallow it. So even though she is S-ranked, he successfully managed to paralyze her, and he also apparently dealt psychological shock to her, gaining three charm. He is glad that it actually worked, but with this, the test has ended, so everyone will be moved to the medical area where they will be healed. After the first round came to an end, all of the injuries were tended to by a medical team, and even though Lim was paralyzed, she still had enough exam tickets and combat time to pass. As for Taehyun, he got seven tickets, and because of his victories against two S-rankers, he became the center of attention, with the other people there being amazed by him. But some think that he used petty tricks. As he walks and admires the healing abilities of the medics, Shin suddenly attacks him out of nowhere and says that here, he will not be able to pull the same tricks in order to win. The others notice that a fight broke out between those two, so they start cheering for Shin, as they also believe Taehyun is a cheater. But Shin zaps them away, as they have nothing to do with this. He tells Taehyun that they should now fight fair and square. He will show everyone that he is nothing without his tricks. As he laughs, a sudden energy appears all around them, and Shin is immediately sent to the ground and knocked out, with Taehyun also being pushed down but he's still up. The test manager comes around and says that he can't catch a damn break with these brats. Why are they acting up? They should know their place already. This is the S-ranked player, Park Sungjin. He is one of the best players in the association and a future SS-ranked player. Taehyun knows all about him. Sungjin notices that someone is still standing, so he pushes Taehyun even further, but he refuses to kneel, even though he feels the difference in skills. Sungjin becomes even more interested, as not even veteran players could hold against this, so he should find out if this will be enough to put it down. Before he can do that, a doctor screams at him to stop, as these kids just got out of treatment. Does he want to put them back in before the second round? Sungjin says that he was just playing around with them, but the doctor knows when he lies. He did it to test their skills. If the chairman hears about this, there will be consequences. He turns around and asks Taehyun for his name, which he says, and Sungjin recognizes him as the C-ranked, who defeated two S-rankers. It's really been some time since someone interesting appeared. He taps his shoulder as he leaves and notes that he must be aiming for the S rank, so he will be waiting for him at the top. The doctors start chasing him away, which Taehyun can only look at. After everyone is healed and ready, they are sent to a forest with a bunch of dungeon portals. Sungjin picks up the mic and hopes that they had enough rest, as the second round of the tryouts will begin now. 
The venue of this test is a real gate that they will pass through and find themselves in a D-rank dungeon. The students are shocked to hear that they will be going in a dungeon with real monsters. But Sung Jin explains that for every five examinees, there will be a supervisor who will look out for them. But this is not a free pass, as they will be evaluated on all their actions while in the dungeon, with any necessary items and weapons being provided by the association. Taehyun didn't expect a dungeon, but it makes sense since everyone who passed must be powerful enough, and they also have a supervisor to be extra safe. Unfortunately, this is not a D-ranked dungeon, it's the S-ranked double dungeon, Apocalypto. At first it was believed to be a D-ranked dungeon perfect for the tryouts, but it was discovered to be the first double dungeon ever discovered after the first party who went in was slaughtered. It would be great if he could warn them, but nobody would believe him. So he will just mind his business and go in. As long as he is not in the first party that discovered the dungeon's real identity, he can survive. When he goes inside of the dungeon, his face becomes tired as he sees who his supervisor is. The A-rank player, Ma Dohak. Side note, this guy is a part of the party that first discovered Apocalypto. So in short, Taehyun is fucked. The other contestants easily take care of the golems that are inside of the dungeon, with Dohak congratulating them for their impressive combat decisions, even though this is their very first battle. He can tell right now they are definitely fit to be players. The others feel overwhelmed by the amount of praise coming from their instructor. But Taehyun has other concerns, as he laments having to be on the first discovery team. Even if the future may have changed with him, he still thinks that this is the team, as Dohak is wearing the unique that the first discoverer of the double dungeon was wearing, the Sage Ring, an item that 10x boosts in strength, stamina, speed, and mana. Even with these stats, the Apocalypto double dungeons is still S rank, so he needs to not get swept in it, as he will not survive without predation in its state. He has to make sure that these guys don't find Apocalypto, not even a hint of it. Eventually, the party arrives at a crossroads, with one of the player candidates asking Dohak what they should do. He tells them to remain calm as this happens all of the time, so first they should take a majority vote to see where to go. In that second, Taehyun just rushes forwards, with Dohak urging him to come back, as it's very dangerous. Taehyun, however, does not stop, as he doesn't want the decision making to them, he will make them go into a different direction, so that they never find Apocalypto and live longer lives. Unfortunately for him, his actions are his undoing, as he lands right next to the Apocalypto dungeon, something which makes him sweat and breathe heavily once he sees it. He can't believe that even though he ran about, this is still where he wound up. Before the others can reach for it, Taehyun screams at them to stop, as this gate is different from any other normal gate. It's weird, so they should report this incident before doing anything. Isn't that the correct thing to do here? Dohak agrees. Certainly this is his very first time that he sees something like this, and reporting it back to HQ would be the wise thing to do. However, a player sometimes needs to act unwise, so they should try going in. Before Taehyun can ask him anything else, Dohak pushes him aside and says that he fully understands his concerns, but the mana he is sensing from this gate is minuscule, not worthy to worry about. It's a mere D-rank dungeon. Even if something happened, they have an A-rank player with a unique item in here. Inside of the dungeon, rules don't matter. Even if they did, exploring the dungeon will definitely score them even more points than any others. Taehyun tells him that even so, the exploring rules are still in place, even though this is a test. Dohak turns around and points at him. He is the one who defied the rules first, isn't he? The others jump on him, as he was the one that ran away to this place. And how does he dare to question an active A-rank player like this? Taehyun can't believe the gull on these people. But Dohak says that with this, it's decided. Before Taehyun can urge him to give this more thought, Dohak snaps his fingers, and a white light engulfs all of them which sends them to the S-rank dungeon, a dungeon that they have no place being in, Apocalypto. The hall they were sent to seems to be guarded by a large knight. The player candidates question Dohak about this. Wasn't this dungeon supposed to be D-rank? Taehyun tells them to shut it as it's too late now, so they should look in front of them as they are coming. From the fog, two A-rank death knights approach, making Dohak's world crash onto him as he starts sweating bullets. He tells everyone to get prepared for battle, and that's when the knights charge in with a powerful double attack, which the party manages to dodge, allowing Dohak to retaliate by creating a bunch of lava spikes and impaling the Death Knights with them. This allows the player candidates to start attacking with everything they got, be it flaming swords or rocky shields, all of this while Dohak guides them. Eventually, they do manage to take down the Death Knights, with the player's candidates thinking that they are safe and that they could actually take many more of these, but he will soon eat his words. As an elite squad appears behind them, 
ready to take their lives at any point. This naturally shocks the player candidates, but not Taehyun, as he is checking the corpses of the other Death Knights and notices that something is seriously off in this place. The fight with the Death Knights continues, with Dohak trying his best to keep them at bay, but they just keep coming. And what's more, is that the player candidates are at their limits. If this keeps going on, they will all die here. Taehyun comes around and tells Dohak that something is wrong, with Dohak being amazed that he isn't tired at all, even though he fought for so long, same as them, just who is here. Additionally, if he didn't have the Monarch Heart skill, they would have all died a long time ago already. He asks him what is, and Taehyun explains that he's just taking a guess here. But these things are not Death Knights, which makes the other player candidates think he's talking nonsense. What have they been fighting all of this time? Taehyun picks up one of the big swords and says that he will find out right now, so they should sit still. He engulfs his fist in rock and charges into the countless Death Knights, who all try to pierce him with their attacks. But he jumps high into the air and jumps over them, aiming to attack the large Death Knight that stands motionless in the front. He eventually pierces something, making the entire room start to crumble, and the Death Knights who were behind him to disappear. The others are shocked to see this happen, and Taehyun comes around to explain. This was actually an illusion trap, which showed them an imaginary space and enemies. It is a tactic used to drain the energy of any intruders. One of the player candidates says that it can't be. They struggled this much against a mere illusion? Dohak also asks how he knew this was a trap, as he shouldn't have fought with a Death Knight ever before. Taehyun notes that even though he does not know much, there is no way that the Death Knights are really this weak. This statement shocks Dohak, but Taehyun tells them to get a move on, before they get attacked by something else. Even after the illusion faded away, things did not get any better, as after Apocalypto manifested, the dungeon was completely transformed from its usual self, and the injuries that were inflicted in the illusion battle got worse. But they also couldn't just find a way for someone to come and rescue them. Their only hope of escaping was to find the dungeon exit. Eventually they find it, as Dohak feels it's just right before this skull-infested gate. One of the candidates asks if it's not even more dangerous, but Dohak says they have no choice here. This time, it's really do or die. When they open the gate, they see a single death knight bowing down, making the player candidates laugh. However, as the night rises, more and more of the room lights up and eventually the entire room is revealed, with an entire tall room being absolutely filled with death knights, something which these guys can never hope to defeat. Suddenly, a loud laugh can be heard from above. These lowly humans actually dared to come all of the way here. How brave! But now, the final battle will commence. This is the Master of Apocalypto and the Lord of the Death Knights, an s rank creature. The Death Knights all pull up their weapons and then aim them at the group, with one of the candidates asking why they are doing this. Taehyun notes that they are requesting an one-on-one -on -one duel, making the candidates go insane with fear, as they don't have a chance. Taehyun tries to calm them down, but they start running away, as they would rather wait things out. But unfortunately, the Death Knights do not allow them to leave, as with a single powerful slash, one kills all of them. Taehyun is shocked, but tells Dohak to take this girl and go, as he will stall for time and find a way out of this mess. Before he can fully turn around to him, Dohak pushes him away and seals the entrance with his abilities, making Taehyun ask what the hell he's doing. Dohak tells him to shut it. How dare a lowly awakened person like him act up like this? In truth, he also wanted to become an s rank player. However, no matter how much he improved and trained, it was never enough. This case was his chance. If he could solve this, he could get treated better and perhaps rise to the next rank. But in the end, he took the lives of some innocent candidates. As a Death Knight attacks him, he uses his wind ability to slash it. He tells Taehyun that even if it infuriates him, he has talent to rise through the ranks. He is different, so he should take the injured away and run as far as humanly possible. Because as their supervisor, stopping them is his sole duty. Taehyun is amazed by his spirit, but unfortunately the girl he was carrying already passed away. There is nothing they can do. With a large thud and explosion, the wall behind Taehyun explodes as the knights have taken Dohak down, with his last words only being heard by Taehyun. The knights move past the bodies they laid on the ground, and one points the sword towards Taehyun, who only now has felt true fear. The death knight requests a duel, as he is the last one remaining. Taehyun notices something glistening on the ground. Dohak's unique ring. The knight takes his silence as a refusal to the duel, so he attacks him. But Taehyun moves swiftly to grab the ring, as this is the only thing that can rescue him now. He puts it on and begs for Predation to finally wake up. As the knights charge in to finish his living days, Predation engulfs all of them and consumes them whole in a red flurry of destruction. 
The Lord is shocked by that amount of power. With all of his stats being increased by 10, the conditions have been met, so the seal on predation has been lifted. Taehyun continues to fight using predation, but the knights just keep rolling in, without any sign of them stopping. He thinks that predation takes about 10 seconds to consume, so he can't only depend on this skill. He must use all of the other ones and his knowledge to get out of this place. Only then, he might have a chance of survival. As he continues fighting though, something rather big hits the exact spot he is in. A gigantic spear, which he notices that was thrown by the Lord himself, who is now commanding all of his weapons to fall down on Taehyun. He tries to dodge them, but even he cannot match their speed. So in a last-ditch effort for survival, he tries to use predation on the Lord. But with a single sweep of his dark hand, the predation breaks. The Lord admits that he is indeed powerful, but he is biting more than he can chew here. With that, he hits Taehyun with his dark blade, standing above him with his boot on his head. Before he dies, he has one last question for him. Who gave him this power? He tries to use the knight's roar ability on him, but Taehyun resists it, even though it seems that it hurts him. The Lord already knows that unlike the other humans, he could understand him from the get-go, so he should speak now. Who dared to bestow this power upon him? Taehyun continues to scream, but inside of his head, he stands in front of Asmodeus, beside him, the bodies of his comrades, and behind him, the Lord, preparing to cut off his head. He feels that nothing is different than how it was before. Questions like what exactly predation is, and how a human like him can understand the monster language, he is too tired to ask them anymore. He acquired this power and a chance, but still, nothing really changed. Why did that king even give someone like him this kind of power? That's when the king answers. He already told him why before. He was simply touched by his tenacity and determination to not give up. Even when facing death, he does not need to change at all. He just has to move forward, no matter what. Taehyun's eyes start growing even redder, with the Lord noting that he must not have strength to answer anymore, so he will grant him the mercy of death. This is his end. However, predation starts to rip through the death knights that were above, something which surprises the Lord. But he laughs, as this insect is trying to go berserk with that skill of his, but his condition will worsen because of it. Taehyun continues gaining stats, but the Lord continues to laugh, as he enjoys this last struggle. Truly, this has entertained him more than any court jester could. He tries to attack Taehyun with a powerful earth-splitting blow, but even if the attack lands, Taehyun blocks it with his hand and asks if he's still curious about what this power is, because he will show it to him firsthand. With this attack, Taehyun advances to B rank and pushes the Lord back. He picks up a weapon from the ground and charges in, with them trading countless blows. As the Lord starts to crack, he becomes even more enraged and uses all of his power to send numerous weapons towards Taehyun, as he will not lose against a lowly human. With one clench of his fist, Taehyun creates a mouth of the predation, which rushes to consume the Lord, who now stands defenseless. Taehyun tells him that this power is not a human power, it is the power of a king. With that, the Lord is killed in a powerful explosion. Taehyun also gains a new skill, the Night King's Spirit. As the people wait for the remaining party to come out of the dungeon, the gate switches up to an S rank 1. The evacuation order has already been given out, but the people inside of the dungeon will get the message later due to this fluctuations. The dungeon might break before they get a support squad. Sungjin damns it all, as how can a D rank dungeon suddenly turn S rank? At this rate, everyone around here will die. Will he have to go inside all alone? That's when the gate starts to fluctuate even harder, making everyone think that it will break. But from inside of it comes Taehyun, who says that he's finally back, although just barely. Thanks to Taehyun's efforts, the double dungeon incident ended with its discovery. The other candidates evacuated with no issues, and the results of this round were based on assessments from before the second round. The corpses of the deceased were retrieved and reached their families for a final goodbye. The chairman now speaks with Taewook and Sung Jin, explaining that they had to hide who actually cleared Apocalypto, even if it came at the price of the press questions endlessly. However, if they did reveal it, Taehyun would have become the target of the press and the villains alike. Taewook agrees that it can't be helped, with Sungil also agreeing. The chairman thanks them for their understanding, and then asks what they think about Taehyun, the person who cleared an S-ranked dungeon alone. Sungjil notes that considering all of the facts, he should at least be considered an S-ranked player. Taewook says that with his rank lower than that, the power he owns is hard to estimate. The chairman asks if they mean what he thinks they mean, with both of them looking at each other and nodding. There is a pretty high chance that in the future, Taehyun will get the rank of a nation's entire power force. Inside of his head, Taehyun is in front of countless monsters that don't even see him. He wonders what he's doing here, but that's when he notices the king standing above him, with the monsters also screaming out for him. 
With one movement of his divine hand, he erases all of the monsters away, amazing Taehyun. He then says that he will be waiting for him, in the deepest parts of the abyss. That's when Taehyun wakes up in a daze, surprised to see that it was all just a dream, but it was too vivid. This was something different. Just what did he mean by telling him that he will wait? There is this skill, predation, that even S-rank monsters know of, and the fact that he can understand them. These questions have no answers. So does he need to go deeper into the abyss to find them? He checks his status window to see his increased stats, but most importantly, his rank raised, and he gained a new ability. He is glad to see that he is finally raised in rank, and with these stats, he could rival S-rank players. Additionally, this ability is the same one that the Lord tried to use to put him down. As he admires his growth, he hears a few thumps and cracks beyond the door. That's when a person opens the door and says that they are extremely rude to not let her visit a sick person. The chairman really thinks so bad of her. This person is revealed to be you. As they drive away from the hospital, Taehyun asks what a guildmaster of a prominent guild wants with him. She says that she's simply dropping him off at home after he got discharged, as he deserves it. But Taehyun doesn't believe that a guildmaster would come all of the way just for that. Yu congratulates him for being sharp, but then asks him if he knows what the third round of the tryouts will be. It will be a survival game similar to round one, but an outsider can actually watch it. Then his powers will become public, and all of the guilds will start hunting for him. So she would like to make him an offer beforehand. Money? Power? Fame? He can gain all of this if he finds the One Piece. Sorry if he joins her guild, the Nightwalkers. She thinks that this is an offer he can't refuse, but he does just that, as he is not interested in the slightest. Taehyun eventually gets off the car, thanking you for the ride, but he feels like walking from now on. She asks why, and if he even heard what she proposed, she can give him anything he wants, anything in this entire world. Perhaps he already got an offer from another guild, but he shouldn't misunderstand. Theirs is the best for him. Taehyun finds this kind of annoying, so he explains that there's no real reason for his rejection. There really is no other guild out for him. But is the Nightwalkers really that special now? He is saying no because he doesn't want to, so he will be leaving now. Suddenly, Yu snatches him from behind and asks what his deal is in all of this. He just started his player journey, and he dares to reject one of the four great guilds with no reason? That doesn't make a lick of sense, however she will forgive him, but only because she likes him. Her subordinate tells her to stop doing that to the candidate, and also tells Taehyun to take the offer, as he is going to join another guild anyway. Why not theirs? Taehyun says that he knows where this stubbornness is coming from. It's no wonder she is related to Lim. Yu asks how he knows about that, and then Taehyun reveals that he knows more about the stolen name too. As he says that, the entire alleyway they are in is engulfed in green light, as Yu has let go of her limits and is holding Taehyun by his neck. The subordinate thinks that this is going to be bad, as Yu's real name is actually Lim. She was raised by the Yuxung Group's CEO as the heir of his fortune and power, but everything changed when another daughter was born into the family. She was stripped of her name and reduced to only an outsider. The fact that she changed her name after becoming a player is something known by only a few people. She asks how he dares to talk about something like this. Is he out of his mind? Taehyun says that she is the one who started it, so she shouldn't feel shocked if something happens. He starts to push her away with predation, shocking you, who wonders how a C rank can push back an S rank like her. Taehyun stares at her for a while, but then takes a step up and pushes her to the wall, noting that they should not cross a line that they would both regret crossing. Yu starts blushing, and the subordinate is rather speechless. The next day at the Coliseum, everyone gathers around, as it's the venue for the third round of the player tryouts. This round is different from the others because an audience is allowed, allowing families and friends to support the competitors. You also came to watch using a disguise. Taehyun's uncle and aunt are also there, who wonder if he will be alright, as they heard the tryouts are brutal. Young tells them not to worry, as Taehyun is strong, stronger than anyone here. He promises that much. Young has become the president of Taehyun's fan club, which now only has one member, him. The reporter, Giha, is also there, who thinks that she has to get a good story now, as her last interview was thrown away because it was of C-ranked, who by now probably was already disqualified from the tryouts. She might actually get fired if she doesn't get anything good. That's when she overhears someone say the atmosphere around there is strange. And sure enough, when she looks, she spots that tons of Awakeners from all sorts of ranks are staring at Taehyun. Are they actually going to join forces to beat up one guy? How strong is he? That's when she notices that he is actually smiling. With this, the test begins, with Taehyun continuing to smile, as nothing can stop him now. As soon as the round begins, all of the candidates charge up their powers and blast them towards Taehyun's direction. 
as they wish to get rid of him instantly, since he took down two S-rankers previously. They must get him out of here now, before he even has a chance. Unfortunately for them, even with their attacks, Taehyun still presses forward, and with his might and speed, he easily takes down a group, who are eliminated on the spot. When Taehyun stops, however, tons of green vines appear that capture him in a prison. All of this done by the guy in front of him, Lee Gilson, an A-rank who thinks that with this, he has won. But with one movement, Taehyun gets out of his restraints and puts him down too, as he doesn't want to waste any time on weaklings. Seeing that this guy is plowing straight through them, they think of the genius plan to attack him constantly, as surely, he will get tired at some point, right? To shut down their plans of conquest, Taehyun uses his new ability, the Night King's Spirit. A sudden red mist starts to engulf everyone's minds, and they all fall to the ground as Taehyun exudes the intimidation of a being that they would never wish to face. Even the public feel this pressure, with some of them barely being able to breathe, but Taehyun does not stop. Yu watches all of this and thinks that he has gone mad. Why did he use this area of attack ability right in the center of this arena? Eventually, it looks like Taehyun has taken down basically everyone, but then says that there is one more person he needs to take care of. From the dust and mist comes Lim, who barely held her consciousness as he used the Night King's spirit. Taehyun asks what she wishes to do, as he does not mind her resigning right now. Or perhaps, does she want a repeat of the first round? This makes Lim blush and her response is to create another arena, just like in the first round. With a sudden scream, she calls out his name and tells him to worry about his situation, as she will not let him do as he pleases any longer. Taehyun isn't too sure about that. Their fight is fierce, with the ice and snow of limbs scattered everywhere. But unfortunately for her, it's not enough, as she didn't even make him kneel. But he admits, she was the most difficult opponent out of everyone, so she should stand proud, because she is strong. With that, the player tryouts have ended, and the top qualifier of this is none other than Taehyun. For his efforts, he is given two rewards by the chairman, a knife and an award. The chairman congratulates him for becoming an S-rank player, and also says that he did not expect for him to finish the third round all alone, but perhaps it was to be expected of the person who cleared Apocalypto alone, right? Taehyun picks up the knife and says that he was simply lucky. A short moment of silence falls on the room, but suddenly the chairman asks Taehyun to join the new South Korean Player Association. This offer shocks Taehyun to say the least, but the chairman is very serious about it. He thinks that a lot has changed from his past, aside from the fact that he awakened and became an S-ranker. He even got scouted out by Yu, and now the chairman of the new South Korea Association. He smiles, as this is all pleasant. The old him would have jumped at these opportunities. However, now, he has changed. He decides to respectfully decline the offer, which confuses the chairman, so he asks why. But Taehyun says that he does not have a special reason for his refusal. He merely believes that rather than being a member of any of the four great guilds or the association, he will do much more by working alone. That is why he apologizes, as he couldn't be of any use to them. The chairman is truly shocked by his words, but then starts laughing out loud, as he has never imagined him to say that he would be better off alone. That level of confidence needs to be studied. But if that is the case, he has another opportunity for him, something which he can't refuse. Does he perhaps want to participate in the Asian exhibition games? The next day, as Taehyun clears another dungeon with his predation ability, he thinks about the Asian exhibition games, which goes like this. Five representatives are chosen from the associations and guilds of all of the countries in Asia for a festival of hunting villains and monsters. However, to be picked as one of these national representatives, one needs to prove themselves by hunting down monsters and villains for the sake of the country, so basically, merit points. The chairman said that it should be easy for him considering his history of sudden advancements, but that's easier said than done, as he just became a player. To even catch up to the merit points everyone has been stacking over the years, he needs to hunt down monsters and villains that are way stronger. Recently, he has been clearing all of the dungeons known to the association for about a month, but even without thinking about the merit points, he has not been able to advance much further in abilities either. He has no choice but to go into dangerous places, but the rewards should suffice, considering the risks. Inside of the mansion, Lee jung Su smashes his glass of expensive whiskey and starts to strangle the bodyguard once he hears what the bodyguard said, who is now begging him to calm down. jung Su asks how he can calm down when the heir of his group, his own son, is still in the fucking hospital. What's more is that the culprit is now an s rank player that continues to rise up, yet he wants him to calm down. He smashes the bodyguard in the ground, and that's when his assistant comes, telling him that there's a guest from the malignant guild at his door. He gets mad about this too, as how dare they show their face after not being able to get rid of one single brat. They are now stuffing their faces with the money he gave them. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. Before he can say any more, a dark presence permeates throughout the room, as the guest from the malignant guild just phases through the door. 
He says that what happened to his son was just an unfortunate event, but he should calm down now, as that brat isn't his group's final target, right? He also forgot to introduce himself. He is the vice guild master of the malignant guild, but he may call him Shadow. Eventually, Taehyun gets out of the portal which sends him right to the front of a building, where a man awkwardly says that he is going to be his guide for the auction he joined. He is also an A-ranker from the Alchemists. He also reveals his name to be Park Jeonwung. It's truly an honor to meet His Excellence. This guy is a hired bodyguard by the Alchemist Guild for the auction, and also a member of Taehyun's fan club, with his skill being gate manipulation. This must be the reason why Taehyun landed here. He starts fanboying at Taehyun, and even asks for his autograph, which he will frame in his home. But Taehyun isn't that impressed, to say the least. This place is where the greatest auction in Asia is held, East Point, the largest in scale within Asia. The auctioned items here are of top quality. They also have automatic interpretation support, so on and so forth. East Point has a lot of positives, but among them, the best would be considered their security. Taehyun asks Wung if he's alright with having that autograph on his forehead, but he continues with his explanation. Bodyguards from the guild such as himself are definitely an important role in the protection, but the constant changing of their warp point makes it impossible for anyone to reach this place without approval. That is why they have not had a security risk in the past decades. Taehyun agrees that indeed, this place is like a fortress, but today, a large-scale attack devised by an S-rank villain will take place. That is the reason he came here in the first place. As the auction continues, and the woman who is in charge of the auction tells everyone about the next item, the Phoenix Potion, Taehyun stands above as he waits. All he has to do is this, as the villain's attack will certainly happen soon, and all he needs to do is defeat him for some easy merit points. At the same time, however, he has no information about this. As in his past life, the news only said that there was some serious damage caused, and that the culprit was one Narendra Nairu. The other important question is, who stopped the attack? As Wung comes over with ice cream in hand, Taehyun asks who the chief security officer is. Wung is quite frightened by this question, which makes Taehyun ask if it's something that he should press him about. But Wung says that it's fine, as it's not that, it's something else entirely. That's when someone from behind them notes that he did not expect to see the 12th S-ranker from South Korea, and also one of the youngest S-rankers in history. He must say, he is so very glad to meet him. This man is Isaki Ryohei, a Japanese S-rank player, the chief security officer of this place, and also has a very ominous nickname, The Devil. Wung tells him to be mindful of how he acts near him, as he has previously stabbed his own comrades if it meant that he would gain something from it, hence his nickname, The Devil. He reaches out a hand to Taehyun as he says that he heard from a little bird that the South Korean Association sent a genius over here, but he did not expect to meet him here in person. What a joyous situation. Taehyun notices that he's trying to handshake with his left hand, which he is mindful of, but thinks it would be rude to not accept. So he does just that. But the moment they connect hands, a surge of power starts going through Taehyun, as Isaki starts laughing out loud like a maniac. Who would have thought that he could endure this personal test of his? It seems that even if he's half-baked, he is still an S-ranker. Taehyun thinks of escalating the situation, but then notices that the pressure is getting to the harmless civilians that are next to them, so he cannot do that. Isaki laughs again as he says that this was just a prank, but perhaps it was too careless of him to go this far on a kid like him. However, he thinks that this was a pretty good lesson for him, as he may be S rank, but they will never be at the same level. He does not know the reason he decided to come here, but he shouldn't try to pull any stunts and get lost if he values his useless life. With that, Isaki leaves, wishing him fun at the auction while laughing away. Taehyun looks at him and thinks that things will be much more difficult with this bastard around. At the unbreachable gates of East Point, a handful of people stand guard, but that's when a man of what looks to be Indian descent and a dozen others arrive. The guards wonder where these people came from, but the head guard tells them that they do not need to know everything, only their orders, to take care of anything that dares to come through the gate, but they should only assist him if things go bad, as an A-ranker like him should be more than enough. After the fight is over, a large monster consumes the head guard as its final reward. While the man, who is revealed to be Narendra Nehru, thinks that this is a splendid spectacle. He is also an S-rank villain with unknown affiliations. The group of people he was with come around and one of them says that a surprising variable has appeared inside of the auction house, with one Kim Tae-yoon, an S-ranker from the New South Korea Association, also being present there. Do they need to change up their plans? Nehru says that he will not deviate from the plan because of some trash from Korea. As long as he is present, nobody can escape his divine revelation. That's when an explosion occurs inside of the auction room. But not only there, as tons of explosions occur all over the place, without any rhyme or reason. Wung asks Taehyun if he's okay, and notes that they need to evacuate right now. 
but Taeyun is more shocked that the explosions happened throughout the entire structure. How did the attackers come in and since when were these bombs put in place? Well, he can think about all of that later, as now he needs to take care of these bastards. In front of him, one of the attackers holds a man hostage and screams at everyone to hand over their valuables and any other things, as resisting will only lead to their death. Unfortunately for him, it leads to his death, as with a single slash, Taehyun takes his head off and also kills the other attackers. He tells Wung that he should go let the association know about this, and also requests some reinforcements. He will go catch the perpetrators of this attack. The last of the guards try to protect the items from the auction with their lives, but with one command from the leader of the group, they are all slaughtered without mercy, and the items are left to the attackers. The main thing they came here for is the Phoenix Potion, which is a unique item that permanently increases stamina and mana by 20 points each time it is consumed. Now, he understands why Nehru wanted this so badly, even if they put their lives at stake for it. If he drinks this, he may gain unimaginable power. That's when a controlled attack takes down one of the group members, with the others, who are calling him Dyke, telling him that there is an attacker inbound. That's when, one after another, the remaining group members are taken out, with Dyke realizing that the one who's attacking them is a stealth user, allowing him precious time to dodge an attack that would have killed him. Knowing this, he activates his ability which makes tons of chain links appear and capture Taehyun. Dyke calls him a fool, as attacking with only stealth makes him think that he's underestimating them, but that will be his undoing as now, he is as good as dead. Taehyun is pleased that he found a skill that can go through stealth, so he will do as a decent substitute for his predation skill at the control room of the warp gates. Tons of people are gathered in the middle. Additionally, there are also countless monsters in there, waiting to feast on their flesh. Nehru laughs, as with this matter resolved, all of the people shall fear their true god even more. One of the subordinates comes around and says that there is a message from Dyke's group who went to get the Phoenix Potion, but there seems to be a problem. That's when the radio that the subordinate is holding starts working, and the person over it asks if he's speaking with Nehru, something which makes him furious. He asks for his identity, but Taehyun only says that he is the one who has what he desperately wants. If he wants this precious item back, then he should come down here right now, like the weakling that he is. Seeing that there's nothing else to do, Taehyun starts drinking some of the Phoenix Potion, which increases his stats and also freshens him up. For a unique, it's definitely in its own league, as he cleared countless dungeons, yet his stats did not increase at all. But with one sip of this, he gains amazing stats that will allow him to protect the potion from the others. Suddenly, Isaki and his team arrive at the scene, where they only see the bodies of the dead and the loot. The team think that the people who sent the SOS message must have run away, since there is nobody here. But Isaki tells them to look a little bit closer, as the perpetrator is right in front of them. He should stop hiding in plain sight and reveal himself. Taehyun decloaks himself and says that this is unexpected, as he was sure his skill was perfect already. Isaki asks what an S-ranker like him is doing over here, but Taehyun asks him the same, as he is the head of security, so he should go and clean up this attack. Isaki laughs and says that there is an item he is looking for, giving Taehyun enough information to make an assumption. From the start he felt that something was off as he is sure that the bombs would have been found with so many bodyguard players and his own trained team. But what's more, is that Nehru came through the east point, where nobody can enter from the outside, so he gathered that someone opened up for him, but he did not expect that person to be the head of security. How shameful. Isaki lets out a devilish grin, and says that he warned him to stay out of this while fully cloaking himself, and immediately attacking Taehyun, who manages to defend himself. Isaki tells him to hand the item over, but Taehyun tells him to take it like a villain should. In that moment, they trade countless flurries of blows, something which cuts up the ground and everything in their path. Isaki's team decides to stay put, as this is a battle between S-rankers. If they walk as much as an inch in their battle, they will be chopped into pieces. They continue fighting, with Taehyun thinking that Isaki knows how to use stealth better, as he only predicts the direction of attack through aura and sound. But Isaki can actually see him. He goes behind him and cannot hope to defend himself, so Taehyun is cut up by the katana. They are both stealth users, but Isaki's proficiency is through the roof. However, even with this, he is not worthy to use predation on. He activates his Night King Spirit ability to put all of his subordinates in the ground and also uses Rock Skin to advance the speed. After that, he wonders where Isaki is, who says that he admires his way of using skills, as stealth is weak against areas of attack skills, but he should have aimed it over his head if he wanted to catch him. With that, he smashes in Taehyun so hard they are sent down multiple levels, finally stopping at level 52. Isaki thinks that it's over, but unfortunately for him, he falls into Taehyun's trap, who calls him a fool. Isaki gets it. The skill he used earlier wasn't to find him, but to make sure that he can't get out of his skills range. He tries to get out, but
but Taehyun manages to catch him with the chain skill and takes him out with a single powerful punch. After that's done, Taehyun ties Isaki and his team up with his chain ability. With all of them still being conscious, Isaki calls him a rotting bastard, but Taehyun just doesn't get why an S-ranker like him would do all of this just for some bonus cash. Isaki screams at him to shut it, as if it weren't for him, he would have been rich by now. In response, Taehyun kicks him away and says that he's nothing but a low-life criminal. His team still seem worried about him and ask if he's okay. But Taehyun interrupts them by asking about the info on Naranda Nehru, as every country's association must have gotten urgent calls for emergency reinforcements anyway. He might as well finish things here before they come. Isaki laughs. Reinforcements? He is nothing but a clueless child after all. At the player association facility, a fat man that looks like the spitting image of Santa Claus rushes into the tactic room and asks what happened with the reinforcements that were supposed to arrive at East Point. This is the alchemist guildmaster, the S-ranker Seo Sangik. He screams at both the chairman and Taewook, as not only were there precious things there up for sale, there were also countless VIPs from the Korean Association. They must do something. The chairman tells him to relax, as they have sent a backup force as soon as they heard about the attack. It's a group filled with elite players, including Park Sungjin. Sangik asks why they have not left yet, and that's when the chairman reveals their biggest issue currently, that there is no way to get there currently. Taewook goes further, and says that the attacker took control of the control room, so all of the warp gates are blocked. Sangik is about to faint, but Taewook assures him that the situation must be controlled already, as they have two S-rankers at the scene. Taehyun has just become S-ranked, but there is only one attacker they have to face. So until they reconnect the warm gates, he is sure that those two will hold out, or even take Naranda Nehru out of the picture. Suddenly, Yu appears, and says that this would have been true if Naranda Nehru was just a regular S-ranker, but she can confirm that he isn't. At the same time as Yu explains the situation to them, Isaki explains to Taehyun, Nehru has the contract with the devil skill, the worst of his skills by far. By offering sacrifices, he will summon a monster of a certain rank depending on how much he sacrifices. Taehyun gets it, that by sacrifice he can only mean one thing, humans. Everyone is shocked by this reveal, with Taewook noting that currently there are around a few hundred hostages, with Sangik also adding that Nehru is extremely skilled, even among S-rankers. If someone of his caliber were to sacrifice over 100 people and summon a monster, the results would be nothing but catastrophic. Taehyun holds Isaki down while calling them a bunch of lunatics, but Isaki smiles too, as even if he defeats him, he will not be able to win against Nehru. He knows that, so he has to make a choice now. Either he begs for his life right now and watches as those hostages who have done nothing wrong are consumed, or go into a fight he has no chance of winning. Inside of the warp gate room, Nehru gets the news that Isaki has lost, but they have yet to find out where Taehyun and the Phoenix Potion are. His command? He tells him that there's no chance for Taehyun to defeat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. He is surely waiting for reinforcements, but that won't work. He drags a few people in the air and makes them scream, as he wants to drag him out and show him the festival of their one true god. Suddenly, all of the lights in the room go out, with everyone panicking as to why that happened. But Nehru is more worried that his sacrifices he is holding have disappeared. That's when a hidden Taehyun appears behind him and immediately tries to chain him up. This will be a ferocious battle. Taehyun instantly tries to chain Nehru, who feels his presence and tries to get away. Even so, Taehyun seems to have the upper hand as he almost has him in his grasp. But that's when tons of mighty snake beasts come out of Nehru's turban, and they unleash tons of fireballs, forcing Taehyun to back away. He can't believe that this guy would just put monsters on top of his head like that. Just what kind of person do you have to be to do that? The captured people behind him recognize his face, and they ask if he's here to rescue them. They beg him to untie the ropes, as those villains suddenly captured them. Some of them even try to bribe him with money but Taeyun just sends them flying until he is done fighting, just in time for a portal to open and for some demons to appear out of it, with all of them charging Taehyun in an attempt to crush him. Even if their blows have landed, Taehyun just rises high into the air with his sheer force while cutting them up. He also uses his aura ability to subdue the monsters, but some of them refuse to stand down and charge in with even greater anger, something Taehyun did not expect, so he is sent flying into the wall by an attack he cannot hope to dodge. Nehru calls him a fool, as the demons he contracted with his devil skill are much different from the monsters he has met up until now, as they are under his direct control because of his magic. Additionally, when he uses his magic on them, they become much sturdier than they should be, and far surpass their strength limits. Just because he defeated that weakling Roihai, does not mean that he can defy the god's will. The captured people can't believe that their only savior is being overpowered. They asked him to save them, but he did as he wished and attacked even if he couldn't win against some simple monsters. That's when someone tells them 
that is not what is happening now. Thanks to his actions, the monsters aren't even looking at them. Not to mention that he is not allowing the monsters to come this way by controlling his power, as he could have probably dealt with them already. The others are surprised when they hear this, as they didn't see it like this. The man continues on explaining that he also evacuated the hostages over to this side by throwing them up into the air. So from the very beginning, Taehyun hasn't been thinking about anything else except their safety. They are all brought to tears by this realization and urge him to not give up. Taehyun suddenly chains all of the monsters up and tells them to shut up already as they aren't helping, which confuses them and even Nehru, who just watches. Taehyun screams that the hostages keep getting in his way and the monsters just keep on coming. He cannot deal with this dumbass shit anymore. The hostages don't know what to think anymore, but Nehru just laughs out loud and asks if he would like to give up, but Taehyun does not answer him. Instead, he begs Jian Wung to finish it already. That's when Nehru feels his presence too, and wonders who he is and how he even got here without being noticed. Wung apologized for keeping him so long, but he's ready now. Back when Roy He was defeated, Wung came around, and Taehyun told him that the security was in bed with the attackers, so he had to deal with them. Wung couldn't believe that so much happened while he was gone, but Taehyun told him that they have more pressing matters, as by now, the warp gate control room is probably filled to the brim with monsters. Fighting them wouldn't be a problem normally, but the monsters will instantly jump on the defenseless hostages once they see them. That is precisely why they need his skill now, gate manipulation. Wung was surprised to hear that he would be helping, but explained that if he does not know the exact warp point, connecting the gate with the association is going to be impossible. Taehyun didn't really care about that, as he needed to focus on one thing only, sending out the pesky monsters. As soon as Wung is done casting, the monsters start to get swept into a large gate that they cannot hope to escape from. Wung cannot believe that the plan actually worked, as he thought it to be absurd, but seeing it now, he gets it, as only Nehru and the villains are left to fight. Suddenly Taehyun screams his name and says that his job here is done. He will take the hostages and get as far away as possible. Wung is surprised at first, but refuses, as he is going to fight by his side. But Taehyun denies this, as the opponent is an S-ranker like him. From this point on, he cannot hope to protect a single being. Nehru, now more enraged than ever, screams out Taehyun's name, who notes that he is right here. Woon does as he is ordered, and tells everyone to come with him, which Taehyun sees, and he is pleased by this. But now that this is sorted out, all that is left is to defeat this guy. Nehru attacks him with a bunch of explosions, but Taehyun gets out of their way and tries to attack him with a few rocks, which Nehru easily defects and calls him a fool once again, as he cannot hope to stop him with his powers. He summons a large beast that instantly rushes to Taehyun. He says that no matter how many hostages he rescues or how many demons he slays, he cannot hope to win against him, as he will not let his efforts go without meaning. He is just a filthy non-believer, whom he will punish for dirtying the name of God with death. As soon as he finishes speaking, the monsters rush in, but Taehyun gets up and notes that he really likes to yap for someone so old. However, he should know one thing, that he is the one that's going to die. He instantly summons a ferocious beast to crush through Nehru's dirty monsters, with him being surprised that he has been hiding this power all of this time, but he starts to laugh once again. He acknowledges that he has talent. He is the highest quality sacrifice he could ever ask for, but he is not the only one who can hide his powers. The moment he activates his other ability, the other villains start to fall to the ground while coughing up blood and slowly disappear from existence. With all of these human sacrifices, Nehru begs his lord to bless him with divine punishment so that he may distribute it to the non-believers. Taehyun stares horrified at the beast that Nehru has summoned this time, an entire bone dragon, which is an S-ranked beast. Wung is eventually stopped by the villains, who wonder why they are here, as they should have all been on the above floor. But he does not get to relish in the fact that they caught this runaway group for long, as they all start to cough up blood and disappear for the sacrifice. The whole building starts to shake afterwards, and Wung can only guess what is happening at Taehyun's location now. The bone dragon charges him as he falls to the ground, completely defenseless. Nehru, who is riding the dragon, says that the dragon is the strongest species. He cannot hope to defeat it. Taehyun didn't expect to battle a dragon today, but he latches a chain into a nearby building and manages to climb inside before falling even further. He cannot even wonder where he had the power to summon such a monster, as the dragon charges through once again and throws him into the air. Nehru says that he will die on this day, which makes Taehyun try to retaliate, but the dragon is much stronger in that regard and completely overpowers him with a breath attack. Even if he has taken the full brunt of it, Taehyun is still alive, something that Nehru did not expect. Taehyun now knows that this dragon is extremely strong. He barely managed to block the attack with his predation skill, but even so, he was still hurt. Not all hope is lost, however, 
as he knows that even if Nehru is forcefully controlling such power, it must be pretty taxing for him too, so he might not last longer. If he can stall a bit longer, he is sure that he can deal with him. Nehru laughs and says that he can see right through his ridiculous schemes. Since a head-on fight did not work out well for him, he is probably thinking of stalling until he can't. That is most definitely not a bad idea. However, he will find out that his tricks will not work on someone like him. He orders the dragon to charge in another direction, right into Wung and the group of survivors, who look in horror at their impending doom. The dragon just swiped the area they were in with a tail attack. At the Korean player branch, the emergency warp gate is successfully connected directly to the east point, but Korea is the only country that's currently connected. So the manager there warns Sung Jin not to enter now, as there might be more danger than they expected. Sung Jin says that he can't ignore the fact that people are in grave danger there, especially that kid. So they will all be entering East Point and killing the villains before rescuing everyone that is still alive. Woon and the others, even if injured, are still alive, as Taehyun has blocked the dragon's breath attack using his predation skill. Nehru expected him to choose this option, but now he will burn into ashes with the others. Woon tells him not to worry about them, as everything will be over if he dies. Taehyun knows that he is right, as now that he cannot fight the bone dragon one on one, the only hope that he has is to wait for Nehru to reach his limits. But even so, he cannot give up yet. No, he refuses to. Thousands of thoughts rummage through his brain as he thinks of a way to save everyone. But that's when someone from behind him says that they cannot take this anymore. But when he looks behind him, there's only Wung, who didn't utter a thing. As he wonders what that voice was, Taehyun's predation skill suddenly increases to A rank. Since his powers have surpassed his limits, his body cannot handle predation any longer. But it does not stop there, as it goes to rank S, then rank SS. Nehru is extremely confused as predation becomes rank SSS and engulfs him whole. Predation tries to deactivate, but it is unable to, which means that Taehyun's body will be ravaged. He does not know why predation is doing this, but he recognized that voice earlier. It was the king. He gave him his powers, but his body cannot hope to hold on much longer. Indeed, it starts to chip away as Taehyun thinks that he cannot die in such a way. He hasn't achieved anything yet. Unfortunately, his consciousness leaves him as one of his arms is fully destroyed. Nehru feels that this is a skill going berserk. But what is with this amount of energy? And why didn't the skill deactivate even though the user fainted already? Still, he refuses to give up and says that he will end his life here and now, in the name of his god. As soon as the dragon charges in however, Taehyun wakes up and pushes him back with his sheer energy, as predation reveals its true nature to Nehru, who cannot believe what he is seeing. Suddenly Taehyun begins talking in another tone, noting that his god must be a joke or something. Nehru can feel that this man is no longer the same one that he fought before, as he has an entirely different aura to him. Who is he? The mysterious man says that it's not his concern any longer, as he is already dead. Before Nehru can say Nani, he is engulfed by predation in a matter of milliseconds, and Taehyun gains the demonic contract skill. As this happens, Taehyun wakes up in another place, where the chains he got recently, and the stone skill attack him. Before he can wonder what is going on, all of his skills start to engulf him and go against their master. Suddenly, a voice notes that these were never his skills in the first place. They were never his powers. Even if he ate all of them, it's now time to spit them out to their rightful owner. Before the beast can fully consume him, Taehyun wakes up in a hospital bed with both of his hands intact, something he does not understand, as his right arm was broken into pieces by predation. Suddenly, Sung Jin arrives while eating some red bean cakes and asks him if he wants any. He eventually fills his table with goodies and says that the association and alchemists prepared this place for him as a show of courtesy for what he did when the villains attacked. Thanks to him, even Ryohai was arrested after falling for the temptation, and compared to the scale of this attack, many more survived than they expected. Tons of people visited him already, like his foster parents and the chairman. They were all crying their eyes out. It was so funny. Anyway, the tests showed that he had no health issues. So they only kept him here in case the villains got any ideas and got involved. Taehyun looks at his hand and notes that he passed out while fighting Nehru. Just what happened while he was out? Sung Jin notes that it's unfortunate that he is the same, as he was going to ask him about that too. When Wung came, he saw that Taehyun took out Nehru in one strike. But what killed him wasn't Taehyun. It wasn't the same person at all. He asked who he was, but as soon as he turned around, Wung was struck with fear and subsequently passed out. The being noticed that it was running out of time so he had to retreat, for now that is. That's when Sung Jin arrived and rescued everyone with his team, with all of them being unconscious. But they could only wonder what took place while they were gone. He tried to ask the survivors what happened, but all they remember is that he tried to stop Nehru. After that it's all blank, like someone erased their memories. Sung Jin notes that it's probably something the villains did, so it's fine. 
If he finds out something else, however, he will get in touch with him. Taehyun knows that Naru couldn't have done this. He doesn't even know how he was healed, as his arm was taken right off. Something strange happened, so he opens his status window to see if anything changed and finds out that he can open gates now. Something that Naru could do. Did he kill him? That's when Sungjin comes around once again and says he has a visitor, Ah Young, who has brought a basket of fruit for him. She just places this basket on top of what Sungjin brought, crushing it much to Taehyun's dismay. She notes that she heard he was hurt, but it seems he is healthy. He confirms that the doctor said that he is healthy too, but she also heard that he rescued a lot of people from the villain attack. Taehyun confirms that he did that too. She notes that he also fought two S-rankers, which again he confirms, but she crushes the apple she was holding in her hand and tells him to not get cocky, as she will catch up to him in no time. Taehyun asks why she came to see him in the first place, and she notes that she just wanted to visit him, but Taehyun wonders if that's true. She thinks that she came out of concern for him at first, but he is as healthy as a bull, and why does he have so much energy all of a sudden? Compared to the tryouts, they are even closer. She wants to ask him something else, but that's when a large thump happens at the door, and a few steps approach them. The one who is barged in unannounced is Yu, which makes Ah Young ask how she knows the password to his house. She tries to tell her that this was given by the association, which she is a part of, but that's when she gets a funny idea. She instantly grabs Taehyun and starts touching his body. This makes Ah Young instantly ask what she's trying to do, but she asks her something instead. If two S-rankers are sharing the same home, what kind of relationship does she think they have? Ah Young immediately screams out that he is still a minor and that what she is doing is a crime, but Taehyun has had enough of her jokes and slaps her hand away. Why is she here anyway? He already rejected her guild offer, right? Yu notes that he's as fussy as usual. She just came to check on him, and she also wanted to give him a present, as she heard from the chairman that he was going to the exhibition games. Even with his feats at East Point, he has only 30 merit points, so to become a representative, he will need more, something that she can provide. For example, something like raiding rights for the Double Dungeon Fire Temple. Where the East Point once was, a strange group of men came on a boat and examined the situation. One of them asks where Nauru is, but the lackey notes that they cannot find him. Will they report this to the boss? The man says that there's no need. They got what they wanted, and they got what they wanted with bribery. But now they have one more thing to deal with. That's when a large boat appears behind them, and the captain urges them to give up, as they have them surrounded. Only authorized people are allowed to come here. They will drop their weapons and surrender. In an instant, the boat that they were all on turns upside down, and they all fall into the dark depths of the ocean. The man notes that he was quite amused by Taehyun, while creating a large black ball of energy. The next day, at the Nightwalkers Guild headquarters, everyone is excited to have Taehyun join their raid. Yu notes that even if he has access to the dungeon, he does not have the right to decide item distribution and members. Taehyun is still pleasantly surprised though, as this is a very nice present. The Fire Temple is the country's second double dungeon, named after its entrance that resembles a burning flame. Before he regressed, the Nightwalkers succeeded in raiding it, but most did not make it out. Considering the difficulty level, there is no doubt that he will get nice things and merit points, but it is unfortunate that his stamina and strength have decreased significantly, perhaps because of his hand. However, with you and these other players, navigating a double dungeon shouldn't be so hard. Unfortunately for him, the other 30 people are standing by while you and Taehyun will go inside, with him being quite confused as to why this is happening. She explains that they are going on a date, but Taehyun wonders if that really is true. When they go inside, they see the beautiful array of lights and the atmosphere of the dungeon, which is quite heavy. Taehyun notes that all double dungeons are like this. Apocalypto sure was. They find a ravine, and Yu wonders how to get down, with Taehyun telling her to be careful, as there are tons of traps. But that's when she is caught by a bunch of tentacles and dragged in. Taehyun rushes to save her from that kind of fate, but she instantly destroys the tentacle monster with only one blow, something that amazes Taehyun. Down below, however, more monsters await, but Yu instantly goes through them like cheese, as they are not a challenge for her. Taehyun notices that all of these monsters are at least A rank, but she is just walking through them. Is this her true strength? He knew that she was already top tier, but now she is more amazing than expected. Now he gets why they went alone, so he will start to help too. Eventually, they finish the monsters off, with Yu wondering how deep this place is as they have fallen for some time. Taehyun thinks that these monsters were not an issue for Yu, but if that's the case, what happened for all of the Nightwalkers to die in this place? As a present, she decides to give him a warrior ring, which boosts strength and stamina, meaning that he can go past his decreased stats. She explains that she had it as a bonus from the guild, but she gave it to him. She is quite generous, right? If he joins the guild, he could have so much more. Taehyun asks why give it now, as it would have been easier to deal with the monsters. 
but she doesn't know how to answer, so he walks in front and notes that they must use caution from now on, as they have reached the place of the dungeon boss. Down below, they spot a fiery egg, with Taehyun not knowing what kind of monster it is, but he's positive that it's the dungeon's owner. Before he can even try to form a plan, Yu just charges right in and tries to break the egg. He immediately jumps down and asks if she's okay, but she turns around and acts as if he is, as she totally smashed the egg with no problems. She explains that it was probably an S-class egg, but it just fell with one blow. How strange. Taehyun knows that this isn't the end, and sure enough, blinding energy starts to come out of the egg, with someone noting that he didn't expect humans to reach him. He also heard her bragging, which was quite funny, but they will all fade away before his blue flames. This is the dungeon owner, Phoenix. Both of them are shocked, as a phoenix is commonly mistaken for an immortal, as it has amazing regeneration ability and magical resistance. But who would have thought that the dungeon owner is a phoenix with blue flames? It starts to emit energy again. So Taehyun warns you that it can control minds. Unfortunately for him, that has already happened, as she is in the phoenix's control. As Yu tries to take Taehyun down, he dodges her attacks to the best of his abilities, until he is forced to use the aura ability to put her into the ground. He begs for her to wake up, as they cannot fight among themselves in this place. But even in her pressured state, Yu rises up and launches a devastating attack into Taehyun that blows up most of the area he was in. The phoenix watches from above and laughs, as this is going exactly how he expected. Humans really are foolish. As Yu looks at the rubble and tries to move, a single chain envelops her foot and stops her. Then another, then another, until she is fully chained up and cannot move at all. As Taehyun slowly gets up, he notes that now he gets why the Nightwalkers were all killed in this raid. He also warns her that this might hurt a bit, but this is the only way. He strikes her so hard that she coughs up blood, but it does knock her out too. Taehyun used a combination of chains and paralysis to stop her, but now she will have time to wake up and gain her consciousness back. Now the only thing he has to worry about is the thing in front of him. The Phoenix laughs once again and asks if he is enjoying the entertainment he prepared for him, but Taehyun is not scared of him as he will turn him into fried chicken. He puts Yu on his back and runs away as the bird tries to strike him down, who is really mad that he dares to run away in front of his excellence. However, when the bird moves closer enough, Taehyun manages to strike hard enough to touch one of its wings and cut it fully. Even with this, however, the bird instantly regenerates and says that no matter how much he cuts, the eternal fire within it will burn ever more. A human being cannot hope to deal damage to such power. The bird unleashes fire everywhere, but Taehyun manages to dodge it by climbing somewhere high and thinks about what to do with the regeneration, and he also noticed that the bird got bigger. Could this perhaps be a greater phoenix? Unlike normal monsters, it would have tremendous strength, as it's considered a mutant. It is also similar in strength to an S-rank player, so if it's really a great phoenix, he can't do anything to it. The only thing he can use now is predation. However, it might explode in his face like last time, so he should weaken the bird first, but he can't do that without predation. What should he do? That's when Yu starts to wake up and notices that she is tied up, and her body is tied up. Besides the increasingly larger bird getting closer to them, she tells Taehyun to release her, but he explains that she was mentally controlled. He cannot do that. Yu does not believe it, but still insists to be let go. And that's when the bird attacks, feeling insulted that they dared to look away from its grace. As he starts monologuing, both Yu and Taehyun strike, with Taehyun telling her to watch out for the control. The bird, angrier than before, unleashes another attack, with Taehyun noting that he will take the front, but Yu refuses, as she unleashes a mighty attack with a spear, and her aura completely transforms. She tells Taehyun to stand back, as this will be her fight. She has activated her berserk mode. This concept of going berserk triggers the reverse mana flow for all available skills. Most avoid using it since it will most likely cause permanent body damage. However, if one can control the power even for a limited time, the power they will receive is tremendous and earth-splitting. Yu uses this same power to cut the phoenix's head clean off, but she doesn't stop there and charges in once again. She punches and kicks the head again and again, until eventually she lands on the ground with it and creates a large explosion. She catches her breath afterwards, but it is becoming increasingly harder to breathe, and soon enough she falls to the ground, unable to control the berserk power any longer. The phoenix is still alive, and can't believe that a human dared to do something like this to him. He desperately tries to retaliate against Yu, but that's when Taehyun summons his chains and holds the beast in place. He can't believe that Yu had enough force to completely eliminate this bastard's regenerative powers. She really is extremely powerful. Even if he doesn't want to, he will have to deal the right blow, won't he? The others patiently wait for them at the portal's entrance, with one of them noting that they are pretty late, making him wonder if they will be alright. Another says that there shouldn't be any complications, 
As the ones who entered are both S-rankers, the only thing he can think about is that Yu tends to just speed through everything without a second thought, so Taehyun might be in danger because of this side of her. That's when Taehyun appears, carrying Yu all the while. The others attempt to rush in, but stop as they see Taehyun has everything under control. He announces that the fire temple has been cleaned out. Someone took a photo of this scene, and rumors started spreading around that Yu was dating Taehyun and went on a date in the dungeon. She instantly sees this after she wakes up and asks her subordinates what the meaning of this is. In the first place, this dungeon raid was unannounced. How did this leak to outside sources? Secondly, why is it such an embarrassing article? She knows for a fact that they did this. The subordinates all confirm it in their own way. One notes that confidentiality is hard to keep, and another confirms that he only told a few friends, but they are all trustworthy. The final one doesn't beat around the bush at all, and says that her judgment is unfair. He told everyone for her sake as he is fully devoted to her. Yu just smiles and tells them that today is the day they die together. Jin Hui comes around, as he heard that she used berserk mode, so he wondered if she's alright. But seeing the three employees in different stages of subconsciousness, he gets that she's as healthy as they come. They go outside for her to chill out, and eventually she says that he shouldn't worry about her berserk skill anymore, since she can use it easily for one minute and not much will happen, though now she was forced to do it for longer. Jin Hui asks how Taehyun's capability is, since this is the main reason she went on that raid, right? She explains that after she passed out, Taehyun was the one who dealt the final blow to the phoenix and ended the fight, so that told her everything she needed to know. It's also been only two weeks since they cleared the final temple, yet he is already on his way to the abyssal depths. Just how strong does he want to get? Jin Hui is surprised to hear this, but this only shows how fast he is growing. Great news for their country, right? Yu just looks at him and says that she doesn't get it at all. Everyone has a desire to go further with their abilities, but after having progressed enough, most get satisfied and stop. She saw this happen firsthand in her guild after all. However, Taehyun keeps pushing and pushing. Even now, he is using any method available to advance even further. Just what is he trying to achieve with all of this power? The leaves rustle as Jin Hui tries to come up with an answer, but then he finally gets it. He is doing it for the love he harbors for his country. In these times when portals appear everywhere and monsters destroy society, he wishes for his country to push above this. His sheer will and desire to help must be pushing him to this point. Yu doesn't know what to say, but can confirm that this isn't it. Most definitely not. Somewhere in the abyssal depths, in a floating castle, a bunch of people lay on the ground in front of a throne, all seeming to be dead. A single human is still alive, and kisses the hand of the monster in front of him, who says that now, they are bonded by a blood oath. This is the Archduke of the Abyss, the Vampire Lord Igmon. The man thanks him, and Igmon asks how it feels to get the powers of his people. The man slowly takes his cloak off, while noting that there were a lot of skilled people in this group. But now, he has become even stronger, to the point that nobody can challenge him. This is China's only force level player, Zhang Linping. Somewhere else, a portal to the abyss swings open and Taehyun goes through it. After he is on the other side, he notes that this is the first time he's visiting this place after regression. He really didn't miss it. His thoughts are interrupted by one of the employees working there, who recognizes him as Taehyun. The man introduces himself as a member of the World Player Association and the manager of the 22nd District of the Abyssal Depths, Paul Becker, also an A-rank player. As they walk, Paul says that this must be his first time into the Abyss, right? Taehyun notes that it's technically true, so Paul suggests that he hire some players to act as his guides, or even mercenaries. There are countless of these player spots around the place that act as safe houses to help other people in their quest of exploring districts that haven't been pioneered just yet. Unfortunately, they are in the abyss, so dangerous beasts might ambush everyone, even if they are in a so-called safe zone. No matter how skilled an S-ranked player is, he should still hire some company, at least to not get lonely fast. Taehyun tells him that something like this will not be necessary, as for him it doesn't really matter. Suddenly a large beast pops out of the ground just as he turns around, and Paul screams at him to dodge, but Taehyun instantly cuts the monster in two. He notes that he will go on a short walk around here, as the atmosphere is pretty nice. After walking and killing a lot of beasts, he thinks that this should be far enough so nobody is around. Because he used predation on the phoenix at the fire temple, he met the requirement of 200 magic power, which was needed to activate the demonic contract ability. He would have liked to activate it, but the ability seemingly changed, as now it can open a gate to the abyss, and this seems to be a one-time skill for some reason. Perhaps predation was the thing that changed this ability, but it doesn't matter. For him, having one powerful monster is much better than having an army of weaklings. He crushes some mana amplifying stones in his palm, which as the name implies, boosts magic power, and a gate starts to form, brandishing a skeleton head and other bony parts. 
After the summoning is successful, Taehyun is curious to see what is on the side. He expects to go to a place similar to this one, but when he goes through the portal, he is met with a beautiful castle under an even more mesmerizing sky. He didn't know such a place existed in the abyss, and even if he maximized his abilities by using the mana stones, this place seems a little overkill. Suddenly a bunch of girls appear while he's mumbling to himself, but he swiftly notices them and has enough time to defend himself against their attacks. One of them notes that he is quite scary with that sharp blade of his. He will have to be punished for this transgression. The others are excited to see him too. These are succubi, and S ranks at that. A succubus is a monster that drains a man's energy through mental attacks, such as illusions or brainwashing. A normal succubus is only around B rank or less, so Taehyun is shocked to see S ranked ones. Perhaps these monsters are his contract target? If they really are, then he has no choice but to take them down. After thinking this through, he immediately charges in and tries to attack the succubi, but they are too swift and easily dodge his attacks with a smile. The leader of this group says that he's pretty eager, which will lead him nowhere, but he might be quite tricky to tame. As soon as she snaps her fingers, a blast of brainwashing power envelops Taehyun fully, and they all drop down, thinking that they finally got him. It's only natural, as no man can possibly resist their mind control powers, no matter how much they try. Unfortunately for her, Taehyun resists and punches her extremely hard. To deal with the other two, he uses his conqueror Haki to make them instantly fall to the ground. One of them can't believe what is happening, as no human can resist their brainwashing. Taehyun tells her that there is nothing to resist against. Being attracted to monsters like them is too abnormal. Now that he has them down, he can finally sign a contract. To form one of these contracts, a player needs to fulfill two conditions. One of them is to give a monster what it desires, and the second would be to subdue the monster by force. Taehyun has basically completed these two conditions, so he moves on with creating a contract, but the system doesn't allow it as this is not his target. He is shocked to see this, but this can only mean one thing. Sure enough, a bunch of other succubi appear, with one of them being a grand succubus, SS plus rank. Inside the castle, where a bunch of men are held by veins and lost in their dreams, a maid comes around the throne room, telling the queen that there's an intruder in the castle, and most importantly, a human. The queen smiles as she hears this, since she hasn't been entertained in a while. Taehyun continues to run around the castle while countless succubi are after him, who all want to offer him as tribute to the queen. Two other succubi appear in front of him through the windows, and he barely has enough time to go below their attacks and use his ability to send them all flying. He thinks that if even the grand succubi aren't the target for the contract, it can only mean one thing. He has to beat the monster that controls all succubi, the queen herself. He eventually makes it to the doors of the throne room, and the maid is waiting for him there, as the queen wants to meet him. When he arrives in front of her, she welcomes him to the palace and introduces herself as the mother of all succubi and their rightful queen, Rosaria. Taehyun gets the notification that this is the target for his summoning pact, which he already deduces. But why her of all things? He is also surprised that she speaks the human language pretty well, which she notices. But she tells him that there's nothing to be surprised about, since he is also a different race, yet understands them perfectly. Taehyun didn't expect to meet a well-spoken monster, and she wonders what the purpose of his visit may be. Wealth? Power? Or perhaps he's just meandering about. Has he come to satisfy his lust like many more before him? Taehyun says that he's after none of those choices. He has come here to make a summoning pact with her. Rosaria starts laughing very loudly after she hears this, as she never expected a guest to be so confident all of a sudden. However, he should keep his delusions to himself, as she will never make a contract with a toy she can just break. Rosaria is also an Archduke of the Abyss, with an unknown rank. With that, she starts to attack Taehyun, who knew that it wasn't going to be this easy and blocks the incoming tentacles with his pressure ability, while noting that he will make her bow down to him soon enough. He dodges attack after attack until he gets the idea to chain the knife to his hands and use it as a range weapon. He finally gets rid of the tentacles and rushes to hit her with one powerful stone-covered strike. But as soon as he approaches Rosaria, his ability breaks, and she notes that he's quite pitiful. With a snap, Taehyun starts falling down into a city, and he cannot use his skills at all. He wonders what is going on, but he realizes that he is in an illusion. The question that is lingering on his mind now is since when was he here? Rosaria laughs, as that is quite the funny question, but she will answer it for him, because he has been good. He was in her hands from the very beginning. Taehyun continues to fall deeper and deeper into the sea, thinking that he must get out of this illusion at all costs. Suddenly, he is transported somewhere else, in a car, where he and his parents are driving somewhere. Taehyun recognizes his younger self, who is very excited about the awakeners he heard about over the radio. He wants to be one of these Awakeners too, and he promises both of his parents to buy them anything they want once he makes it. 
His mother thanks him for the kind words, but the most important thing for her is for him to live a happy and healthy life. Young Taehyun thinks that this is really boring, but present Taehyun thinks that his parents were always like this. Rather than him getting a high rank, they only wished for him to be happy no matter what he did. He smiles at this moment of peace, but unfortunately it is broken, as he is transported in another version of this car, where both of his parents are lying dead in their seats. On one side, he sees his aunt and uncle, who can't believe that they left Taehyun all alone in this cruel world. On the other side, he hears something all too familiar. He sees him getting bullied for being a normal human with no powers, something that was a frequent occurrence before. Taehyun understands that these are all visions of his past, his dear and not so dear memories. He also sees himself as a porter, living a life of constant abuse and mistreatment. Because he was a non-awakener, because he held no strength, he could not stand up against life and was forced to go with the flow every time. What was even harder to bear on her shoulders was this. At one point, his auntie told him to just come back. As he hasn't fully recovered yet, he's in no condition to go back in again. Money isn't an issue for them so he shouldn't worry about it. He said that he is very grateful for everything they have done up until now. He loathes himself even now for this. He was unable to help others and dragged them into the same misfortunes he had most of the time. Even if his parents wished him only happiness, he soon realized that to be happy, one must have strength too. The system confirms that he is under the queen's hypnosis and attempts to break him out, but it fails and his stats are all reduced. He goes through all of his skills to see which ones he can use and falls back to the one that gave him the strength he always needed, predation. As soon as he uses it, he blasts through the unsightly memories to forge a new path. Somewhere else in his memories, Rosaria is surprised to see that he actually managed to get away from this guy, but she noticed something strange while exploring. For some odd reason, there are memories where he looks older than he is, and there are also memories with outcomes that cannot exist in this timeline. She wonders what other secrets he might hold so she cuts Asmodeus in half, only to reveal something she never expected. The king himself appears before her, which she seems to recognize, but before she can do anything else, predation envelops her and cuts her out of his mind, so she ends up in reality once again. Taehyun puts his knife to her neck and notes that going through people's memories isn't a nice hobby to have for a queen. He will repeat himself only once. She will accept the summoning pact. Rosaria never expected to see someone escape one of her illusions, but he is still a fool, as the toy he has in his hand can't do anything to her. Taehyun notes that they will see about that, even though he wouldn't really like to fight anymore. She knows full well that she is bluffing, though it doesn't matter anymore. In an instant, she grabs him and announces that she will accept the pact before sinking her teeth into his shoulder. This fulfills the conditions of the pact, and the skill also changes from demonic contract to the queen's man. Taehyun also receives the complete hypnosis skill, and his charm stats are also increased. He falls asleep after all of this, and Rosaria hopes that he has a nice rest, since he is the king's chosen after all. Eventually, Taehyun wakes outside of the castle, where Paul Becker is very glad to see him awake. He asks where he is, and Paul notes that this is the player zone. They found him like this while on patrol. What happened to him anyway? Taehyun wonders if Rosaria sent him here, or that the whole encounter was a dream, but when he looks through his skills and stats, he gets that it wasn't. The Queen's man summoning skill and complete hypnosis are proof of that well enough. If he can truly summon Rosaria, however, he can face powerful opponents, even at the level of a nation's power. Additionally, the skill she granted him is without any limits. Even if this is all well and good, he wonders why she changed her mind so suddenly. And now that he thinks about it, he remembers her saying something about the king. But how does she even know of him? Paul grabs his attention and asks why he's so lost in his mind. Perhaps hiring a guide really is the wise thing to do. Taehyun notes that he is fine, since he no longer has any business here, so he will be going home. It doesn't take long for you to be discharged from the hospital, and when she leaves it while getting dressed, she is greeted by the vice guild master of the Nightwalkers, Young Hansu, who is glad to see her fine. Yu notes that she isn't just fine, as she already beat some guys up, so she's feeling very well. Hansu just laughs and notes that he came here with news that might interest her, as Taehyun has returned from the abyssal depths. At first she is surprised by this, but then thinks that perhaps it's not early, since the depths are a challenge to scour even for her. Hansu agrees, as that place is called the grave of the S-rankers for this reason, but his return isn't the most interesting thing here, it's who went to meet him. Yu asks who it is, and so it's revealed that the leader of the undivided guild player Kwan Kang Hyuk is currently waiting for him. When they meet face to face, Kwan instantly invites Taehyun to a duel, which surprised him, as this guy is the leader of Undivided, which is one of the four great guilds, and also known as the best tank in Korea. However, he is very notorious for one single thing, that is recruiting people by forcefully dueling them. Suddenly, 
His secretary comes around and slaps the fight out of him, as they will get another call from the Human Rights Committee if he continues to act like this. She doesn't want to come up with excuses for him again. Taehyun is quite confused by this, until she introduces herself as the Secretariat of the Undivided Guild, Secretary Kim, and notes that despite their Guildmaster's ugly way of acting, they are here to scout him officially. If he does want to join them, there is no need for the duel. Taehyun doesn't like the wording on that, and asks if this means that they will force him if he refuses. Kim can't deny it, but it's not like he doesn't get benefits from it. And he is also participating in the Asian Exhibition Games, right? Their guild is the best when it comes to Abyss Exploration, and they even have raid schedules with full Abyss Exploration support. If he were to join, he would definitely get the merit points he lacks now. Quan tells her to stop trying, as if this guy would have been so easily swayed by words, he would have joined by now. But Taehyun suddenly notes that it isn't true, and he changes his mind. Quan asks if he's going to join their guild, but Taehyun wasn't talking about that. He was talking about the duel. The winner gets whatever they want. Sounds fair? Quan can't believe the gull on this brat, but accepts nonetheless. Shortly after this, the fight is established to take place at the arena. And when the day finally comes, Taehyun is bombarded with reporters while he enters, which tires him, and makes him wonder if he should just crush everyone with his Night King skill. Among those reporters, however, is also Kim Giha, who desperately tries to go through the waves of reporters, but is suddenly helped by Taehyun, who grabs her hand and notes that it's been a while since they last met. Everyone fires up as they see him holding her hand, and even she is surprised that he actually remembered her, but he suddenly says that he doesn't have time for questions, and they will all be answered through the report. He doesn't want to make Quan wait after all. This leaves Giha to be bombarded with questions, letting Taehyun safely pass the wave of reporters. After this, he walks straight to the podium, and meets face to face with Quan. He notes that he was worried he would run away, but Taehyun says that he thought the same, though now it's time to settle everything once and for all. The announcer, Choi Haziol, notes that finally they get to see the match everyone has anticipated. There is only a condition for victory, make the opponent kneel in front of their might. With that, they both get into position, and Taehyun is the first one to make a move, using the Night King's spirit. He thinks that it should be able to take him down since s rank monsters aren't an issue, but Quan still stands. He agrees that his power is quite impressive, but not enough to work on him. He uses his cheetah ability to dash behind Taehyun and uses the power of a bear to send him flying. Taehyun is forced to use his chain ability to try and do something, which makes Quan say that he has a few decent tricks up his sleeve, but he will not be able to stand on his own two feet for long. He uses a rhino's power to charge in with great force, and then switches to an elephant's weight to crash right into Taehyun, who cannot hope to not be damaged by this attack. After the attack lands, Quan jumps away and says that he has a real talent for running away, as he didn't expect him to get away, but Taehyun notes that he's just biding his time. Unless he has another mysterious beast to show him, making him kneel won't be easy at all. Quan says that he sure talks a lot for someone who is completely cornered, but since he has challenged him so confidently, he will end this with a new beast. With that, he summons the power of a T-Rex at his fingertips, making everyone think that this is over since Taehyun has no chance to beat the Guildmaster after he uses that ability. Yu is also watching, glad that she came to watch, which surprises her subordinate, who notes that Taehyun seems to be losing, meaning that he will have to join undivided. Yu says that he's right, making the subordinate suggest they stop the duel. Quan has the blessing of the beast's skill. He mimics the strength of various beasts, and this skill has amazing power just because of it. Even if it's Taehyun, winning a 1v1 is too impossible. Yu tells him not to worry so much, as no matter what happens, Taehyun seems to always have something surprising to reveal. Quan charges in with full power, but Taehyun does something that makes everyone in the stadium shocked. Even Choi is amazed to see that Quan is now kneeling on the ground behind Taehyun. He notes that this means victory is his right. While this is happening, the secretary of the Undivided Guild is explaining to the Human Rights Committee why their guildmaster is fighting a very fresh awakened. It takes a while for everyone to process what just happened, but when they do, they deny the truth and demand another fight, as this one is clearly invalid. Taehyun expected some backlash, but he never expected Quan to push him so hard. He truly is Korea's top ranker. He only won because he got complete hypnosis from Rosaria, which he used to make him kneel. Quan is amazed that he actually lost, as he can't even remember what happened. Was it a mind control skill? How could he not think of that? He is mad about this, but he is even more mad at everyone asking for a rematch, so he tells them to shut up, making everyone go quiet. He does not know what skill this guy used, but losing it is his fault, so the result will not be changed. If they are truly members of the Undivided, they will accept this result, and if they have any complaints, they should come directly to him so he can send them to hell personally. 
Yu notices that losing against Taehyun pissed that guy off real good, but she also didn't expect what happened. Taehyun really never fails to surprise her again and again. Hansu is quite weirded out by the face she is making now, but he doesn't say anything. Kwan swiftly rushes right next to Taehyun, who offers him a handshake and says that this was a really good match. Before accepting, Kwan asks one thing. Did he plan to win from the beginning? Taehyun notes that to a point, he did. This makes Kwan smile and accept his handshake, and since they had a promise, what does he want? Money? Perhaps a mystical item? Taehyun explains that those are not bad choices, but he does not wish for an object. What he wants is the Labyrinth Minotaur, something that shocks Quan. More specifically, he wants to participate in the raid of the Labyrinth Minotaur, as he knows they are going to do it soon. Later at the Hero Association, Tai Wook is told about what happened by Jin Hui, who also says that this is a dungeon that is positioned at the entrance of the Abyss. The dungeon speaks for itself, as it's filled with a myriad of traps and it's hard to navigate. Someone with good detection skills is most definitely needed. What's more surprising is that despite it being at the entrance of the Abyss, many guilds and S-ranks have tried to challenge it, only to fail. The Undivided Guild has the raid rights for it currently, and they were about to attempt it, but all of this was secret. Taewook asks how Taehyun knew about such a thing. Is this really okay to let go? Jin Hui tells him that it's fine, even if he is also stressed a bit since this is the Abyss they are talking about. There's nothing they can really do, except trust the people who will challenge it. In reality, his concern isn't the difficulty of this dungeon, but the people who are partaking in it. He can only hope that his worries are not true. Suddenly an employee calls him and says that they have an urgent matter to discuss. They got a message from the Japanese Player Association, making Jin Hui wonder why they have dealt with the East Point matter have they not? The employee says that it's not about that. The Saintist sent an invitation to Taehyun. Inside the association's large underground gate control room, everyone gathers for the Minotaur Labyrinth and Secretary Kim starts counting everyone until she gets to 100, the full raid team of this labyrinth. With the confirmation that everyone is here, Quan tells everyone to move forward, as it's time to slay some cows. When they do get inside, the fighting immediately starts, with Taehyun easily taking care of these low-level monsters that dared to face him. Quan watched him fight, and said that he has some really impressive skills, and he also asked if he liked the little weapon he gave him. Taehyun notes that it certainly isn't bad, and since he had to send his usual weapon to repairs, this is great. Quan expected it as such, as he was planning to give it to him once he joined the guild. This is Asran, a rare blade. His joining this raid group benefits them, so it did not feel right for that to be his reward, hence the knife. Taehyun thanks him for his generosity, but asks if he's really alright with doing this labyrinth. Everyone has failed to fully raid it for the past 30 years. Without any measures, they will suffer the same fate. Secretary Kim explains that everything is fine, Everyone participating is a veteran player, of at least B rank. They are already eliminating the monsters with no setbacks, and their vice guild leader is also removing all of the traps using his detection skill, so they don't have to slow down. They even found a clue to this labyrinth a few months ago. Taehyun asks what she means, and Quan tells him that they found the corpse of a minotaur, who seemingly came from this labyrinth in the abyss. It had the same tattoos as they see everywhere in this labyrinth, but when they touched the corpse, everything turned to dust except one horn. Taehyun knows what that means, and Quan says that if that bastard was really from this place, they can use tracking skills to follow where it went and find a path. After a lot of tracking and searching by their vice guild leader, they all arrived at the end of the labyrinth, which has a giant minotaur statue that is missing a horn, which they also notice. Quan tells Secretary Kim to bring the horn, which she does swiftly, and Taehyun thinks that everything has happened just like it did before his regression. The raid team reaches the end of this labyrinth and uses the minotaur horn, but what happens now? Nobody expects. Quan takes the horn and shoves it back in place, making the room light everyone, and everyone cheers for the first victory of this labyrinth. Unfortunately for them, the horn shatters, and they are all transported somewhere else entirely. It seems that everyone has been transported somewhere different, be it a river or a rupturing volcano. Taehyun isn't surprised, as he knew about this already. It's a spatial transfer trap. The others around him are naturally confused by this whole ordeal. Somewhere else. That particularly strange man who is apparently named Mr. Shadow is informed that Taehyun also joined the raid team. One of his subordinates apologizes profusely, as it happened too suddenly, but what should they do now? If he wishes, they can completely halt the operation. Shadow says that this is perfect, as 5S ranked villains infiltrated the raid team, and including the A ranked villains, it's about 20 people. Even if Quan and Taehyun join forces, they won't be able to fight forever. He wonders what they will do when they find out about all of this. He has not been this excited for a long time. Someone from Taehyun's group feels that it's only natural they introduce themselves, and a B-rank player by the name of Miranda introduces herself first. 
but Taehyun swiftly kicks her face and says that she can't lie to him, as she is the S-rank villain, Milena. A player by the name of Park sung hoo has always wondered what Taehyun was like. Perhaps he is a hero like their guildmaster, always reliable, and a light in the dark. Or perhaps he is a saint as the rumors talk about, and he was willing to sacrifice himself in order to save the people of East Point. Either way, unlike him, Taehyun is someone worthy of everyone's respect. His opinion changed, however, when he saw Taehyun kick a woman like she was a ball. sung hoo is naturally shocked and asks what he did, but Taehyun tells them that she was a villain, and there's no reason to worry about her. sung hoo immediately pulls out his gun, a hell of a reaction, and calls Taehyun a lunatic, who simply dodges his bullets, and says that what he said is true. sung hoo didn't expect this guy to be a maniac. Did he lose his mind because of this crisis or something? He does not believe what he said. Miranda is a precious friend. She has been hunting and exploring with him for a long time. There is no way she's a villain. He rushes to her and tells her to get up. She must get away from this bastard. He will try to hold him off. Suddenly, Milena punches him so hard that all of the simping flies out of his body, as she doesn't want to be touched by such a loser. Taehyun told him that she was the villain, but he doesn't have time to wake him up, as two other villains are attacking from behind. They launch their attacks, but Taehyun immediately teleports behind them, and certainly didn't expect to meet three villains. Perhaps he should have memorized the nobodies too. Milena takes her jacket off and ties her hair to get more comfortable. She notes that he's quite the strange man, as she has been infiltrated into the undivided guild for years. But nobody noticed a single wrong thing about her. So how did he? Taehyun tells her not to worry too much about it. She did nothing wrong. It's just that he came from the future. Milena naturally thinks that he's lying. But since she heard that he and you are in that kind of relationship, perhaps the Nightwalkers found out somehow? It doesn't matter anyway now, as he will die where he stands. She attacks him with her extended claws, which he dodges, but the other villains follow up with their attacks, which miss again. Taehyun uses this opportunity to tie both of them up with his chains and send them flying, allowing him to have a one versus one with Milena, who wonders how he was able to do such a thing so swiftly. She knows that he is no ordinary person, but even so, her skill is witch nails. It spreads poison to the entire body the moment her claws rip into someone's flesh, and they cause vomiting and hallucinations, among other things. Even an S-rank player cannot hope to stand against it, and she knows that she scratched him on his face already. So how is he still standing? Taehyun notices her confused face and apologizes, as poison doesn't do jack to him anymore. He summons the Night King's power, and Milena is too into her dash to dodge. So she knows that she's screwed. This is Taehyun's victory. After sung Hu awakes, he gets up and walks towards the scene, where he sees Taehyun standing over an angry Milena, who demands that she be released this instant. But Taehyun just grabs her hair and says that he isn't playing anymore. He will be asking her some questions now, which he hopes she can answer. With hypnosis activated, he asks how many people are infiltrated and their purpose for it. Milena feels compelled to answer, and says that there are 20 villains, including 5 S-ranks, and their purpose is to sabotage this raid, besides attempting to kill the guildmaster, Quan. Taehyun processes the information he got, and remembers only 3 S-ranks being here before he regressed. There was the gatebreak accident too meaning that the future is changing, and it's becoming unpredictable. Is it because of him? He has time to think about all of this later, and tells sung Hu that they have their objective so they should go meet up with Quan. As they walk away, sung Hu still thinks about Miranda, as he can't believe that she is really a villain. Did Taehyun know about it from the start? Before he can think of anything else, Taehyun tells him that the way out of this place is quite easy, as even if it's completely different, this place is still a labyrinth, so there must be a passage that is connected to another place. Naturally, it can connect to a myriad of places, so they might not reach Quan from the first one, but they will get there eventually. Before entering, sung Hu has one question for him. Why did he not tell anyone else about this? He apologizes for doubting him earlier, but if he had told the Guildmaster about the infiltrating villains, this would have never happened. sung Hu waits for an answer with a sad expression, but Taehyun notes that he already told him, which shocks sung Hu. Taehyun says that he can believe it if he wants or not, but the fact is that Quan already knew about it. After the vice leader takes his knife out of Quan, the others all approach him with killing intent. Quan asks if this is some kind of sick joke, but the vice leader just laughs. Secretary Kim rushes to his side, which allows a swordsman to aim at her back, forcing Quan to grab her and take the hit in her stead. She is shocked to see what just happened, but they don't have time, as three others are rushing them. So Quan pushes Secretary Kim away and uses the power of a T-Rex to blast the attackers away. Secretary Kim says that she doesn't need protection, as she will fight too. But Quan tells her to lay low, as she cannot handle these bastards, not even one of them. Kim notes that at this rate, he will surely die. 
which the vice leader agrees with, as he does not have the luxury of protecting others in this situation. All of this time, they have been hiding their powers, but now, there's no longer a need to. Everyone here is at least an A rank, and there are four S rankers in total. They are the elite of the malignant guild, and they are here to kill him. Quan notes that they made tons of preparations, and he thought that he had a good eye for people, but the vice leader says that he shouldn't beat himself over it. As they have been working for years on this plan, there is no way a fool like him could have figured it out. Quan then says that Taehyun was right. That bastard already knew who they were and their intent to assassinate him, although he didn't want to believe him. The vice leader is shocked to hear this, as he knew all along. But more importantly than this, why did Quan not do anything? He explains that a real man does not doubt his brothers. As a guildmaster, he could never do that to them. Everyone around him is shocked at how stupid he is, and even Kim wants to rip his head off now, but she doesn't have the time. As the vice leader strikes, he thanks him for being so dumb, as their plan will now be a success. He should rest easy, as he will give him a painless death. Quan activates his powers, and notes that he didn't doubt them, but that doesn't mean he will not defend himself. With one strike of the ancient dragon, the vice commander goes down. This is Quan's true power. Before all of this, when Taehyun told him, he didn't say anything, which made Taehyun mad. Was he going to take it while doing nothing? Quan just sighed and told him that he had never seen his true power. So he shouldn't worry, as he believed him, but he would never take it lying down. Surprisingly enough, Taehyun and Sung Hu make it to Quan quite fast, who is glad to see them here. After landing down, Quan asks if they saw anyone else, and Taehyun says that they saw a few, but given the situation, he ignored them, as they are big enough to help themselves. Anyway, what does he plan to do now? Quan looks at him and says that even if it is frustrating, they have to retreat, as there are still some villains, and the boss of the labyrinth has yet to show up. Even with this, the only option left would be to aim for an escape so that they don't suffer more damage. He would also like to apologize, as it's stubbornness that did this. Taehyun says that as long as he understands that it's fine, which angers Quan. But Taehyun thinks that he wasted some time since he did not gain merit points. But this was the right choice. He shared all of the information he knew about the villains to help with the raid. But considering Quan's injuries, he isn't in a state to fight. Additionally, he only had bits and pieces of information about this raid so they should leave before more variables come up. Suddenly though, he hears something interesting when Kim asks Sung Hu if there were any monsters or traps in the other spaces. Sung Hu confirms that they have not seen anything, but this confuses Taehyun, as they should have seen at least some types of traps, if not regional monsters, but they pass through without a breeze. But why? If there are no monsters and traps, how did Quan come across the master labyrinth before regression? That's when a mystical door opens, and the boss of this labyrinth, the Grand Minotaur Queen appears. She immediately goes for the attack, which forces everyone to retreat, but this attack was actually directed at the door behind them. Since they are the only powerful players here, Taehyun and Quan charge up their abilities and go in, attempting to take down the Minotaur Queen. Seeing them rush towards her, she starts using all of her weapons to slow them down, but this doesn't prove that useful, so she uses a strange scepter to revive the dead Minotaur of this realm, the Tao King. Quan is surprised to see him alive again, but that's not all as even more minotaurs rush Kim and Sung Hu. Suddenly the queen speaks. Those who wander their labyrinth, those who dare to disturb their slumber, should not worry anymore and come forward. She will meet their hostility and malice with repentance. Some of the bulls still go for Kim and Sung Hu, but Quan rushes in, accompanied by Taehyun, who assists him by using his chains to hold the bulls in place, while Quan unleashes a fiery breath on them that completely annihilates them. After landing, Quan thinks they're defeated, but the bulls keep going even though they're melting frightening them. With this in mind, Quan goes for their heads, to completely annihilate them. But even with their entire heads taken off, they still manage to regenerate, making Quan wonder how he should even take down this many, including the queen. Even if he were able to deal with the queen, she's not somebody he can fight with while also protecting Kim and Sung Hu at the same time. Taehyun is already doing everything he can, so they won't be able to hold out for longer. What should he do as a guildmaster? What is the best way to get as many people out of here as possible? He remembers the talk he had with that old man from the association, who told him to make a choice, as no matter how strong he was, if he forces someone to join him through a duel, the association will most certainly take action. Additionally, if he is going to accept a new comrade, he should consider not just their skills, but also what kind of person they really are. Quan told him that he doesn't live his life doubting every single thing, like he does, which the old man could not deny as it suited him, but he needs to have doubt too. During his time as a player, he has seen countless things, and one small mistake can destroy a team, and the one he swore to protect. His strength will not solve every little problem of his. He should recognize his limits, and choose what is important for him and his team.
that's what it means to be a good player. Quan sat there for a while before smiling and saying that he's not as weak as he is. Now that Quan is in this situation, he thinks that he should have taken the words of the old man more seriously. If he kills the enemy, his comrades will surely die. But if he does not kill them, his comrades will still perish. Are these really the only choices he has? He refuses to give up and sits idly by while his comrades are being mauled. He charges through a bull straight to Taehyun and asks if he's the same as him. He is extremely greedy, so he will find a way to secure his comrades while also crushing these beef patties into dust. He will not make a choice. Taehyun does not know what he's yapping about, but he likes his energy, so he tells him that there is a way to defeat the queen. After telling him, they rush through the countless bulls, and Quan asks Taehyun if he's sure this will work, and he says that it most likely will. The Minotaur Queen sees that they have reached a decision, which is utterly pitiful. No matter what choices they make or the decision they come to, the result will always be the same. As the bulls charge, Quan unleashes another fiery breath, and the queen tells him that what he's doing is futile. His powers will not work on her children. That's when Taehyun rises from the fire like a phoenix, and uses his king's ability to grab the queen by the neck and send her flying through the portal she was coming out of. Before charging the queen, Quan asked where they were going, and Taehyun told him about his theory. This is just guesswork, but just like how the spaces here are connected through the doors, the gap where the queen is coming from is likely another one of those spaces. The Tao Kings are just being revived by the queen, who is constantly staying in that space. If the queen disappeared, they would too. Quan laughed, and said that if he's wrong, everyone will die. Taehyun felt like their current situation was not that different, so it was worth a shot. Sure enough, the Tao Kings all disappear as soon as the queen leaves the area. Taehyun continues to push her back with his ability, but she summons enough strength to start hitting him. But just in time, Quan comes and protects him. The queen lands gracefully, while Taehyun crashes into the ground. But he's in much better shape than Quan, as his entire right arm is missing. Taehyun is shocked to see this, but Quan tells him to focus, as the queen won't stop attacking. Sure enough, she comes hurling out of the darkness, with both Quan and Taehyun attacking with all of their might, but they still get thrown around like puppets. The queen notes that they are truly amazing for children. She never expected them to think about using the space she created, but now that she's not using her powers to revive the Tao Kings, it gives her much more options. Taehyun can only scream out as the queen rushes in to attack him and starts to bash him again and again. Taehyun cannot believe that the gap in their abilities is so huge. If he doesn't use predation now, he threatens death. He begins doubting himself, however. Even with predation, will he be able to bring that towering beast to the ground? If he doesn't finish this in one blow, predation will surely go berserk again, and now he cannot afford it. As he wonders what to do, he remembers what he talked about with Ayoung, about application. Taehyun was asking about how to use skills, which Ayoung didn't inquire about, but she told him that the skill descriptions are rather lackluster. The way to handle a skill in reality can change in many ways, unlike what is written about it. Adjusting its power can also change the amount of mana used. For example, she only uses Amazon Spirit, but she can apply Chi to strengthen her body and even create surprisingly powerful bullets. In combat, he sometimes mixes skills and usually only applies stealth to the ring he's wearing, right? So if there is a skill he is not that great at controlling, he should try coding his weapon with it, or even another skill. That will certainly improve his odds. With this realization, Taehyun snaps back at the queen using his predation-coded knife, which actually works and pushes her back, even cracking one of her axes. Now Taehyun knows that he has a fighting chance. The queen naturally gets mad and attacks widely, allowing Taehyun to strike her again and again, eliminating all of her weapons. He also uses a predation-coded chain to puncture her shoulder, and then punches her with the Skeleton King ability. He vaguely felt it before, that predation changes its form according to his wishes, which means that he can apply it to anything. He does not know much about the ability, but no matter what kind of nature it has, he intends to use it as much as possible. The attacks Taehyun left on the queen have broken her, and as her soul passes from her body, her domain breaks as well, freeing everyone from their respective situations. As they all wonder what happened, they see two figures coming out of the shadows. It's Taehyun, who is carrying an injured Quan. Everyone immediately jumps on them and celebrates their victory. After the queen was defeated, the raid team discovered countless gold and silver treasures deep in the labyrinth. Among the treasures, the most valuable was an elixir which upon being drunk, would boost anyone's stats significantly. The unique great elixir, Fountain of Vitality. There was not enough elixir for everyone, so it was only given to the two who contributed the most in this raid, Quan and Taehyun. Although Quan lost a lot more stats than he would have gained considering the loss of an arm, the villains that infiltrated Undivided were arrested on the spot, and the players who participated all focused on recuperation and rest. These days were filled with smiles and laughs, 
The chaotic raid they all experienced came to an end. Not long after it, Quan appears to the public and says something that leaves the reporters shocked. Is he really retiring? Quan grabs the mic and tells everyone that they are idiots. Do they not understand that he just said he was resting? One of them stupidly asks if it's because of his arm, and others wonder who will replace him in the Asian exhibition games. Quan confirms that it's because of his arm injury, but they don't need to worry about the exhibition games, as he has found a replacement. In fact, he is here to speak right now. Kim Taehyun. The reporters start to bombard him with questions, as most know of the rumor that they found the fountain of vitality in the labyrinth, which some say made him the rank of a national force. One of them says that's impossible. Those who say that don't even know what the national force rank even means. The people in that rank are monsters from a different world, even among S-rankers. The rank was created for them, as the S rank was too low, so Taehyun reaching that is far too early. Taehyun grabs the mic and introduces himself, before saying that he will represent Korea in the exhibition games. They must be worried that he will be replacing Kwong as he's still a rookie compared to everyone else. He also can't confirm that he will perform as well as the previous representatives. There are also currently no way to prove the rumors going around about the national force rank. Many people watch this broadcast from different places, most thinking that he's not confident at all. Taehyun suddenly grabs the mic tighter, and notes that he hopes this opportunity will be a place where he can prove himself. Naturally, that will include the rumors about the national force rank too. In a dark place, one of the villains who escaped begs for mercy, but her master gives her none, as he does not need weaklings. To even see trash like her alive was infuriating enough. He tells his subordinates to clean up, as the masked man thinks that something is strange. They invested a lot of manpower to avoid another East Point situation. And even if Quan's assassination failed, the labyrinth shouldn't have been cleared. The thing connecting these incidents is Taehyun, so this year's exhibition games are going to be quite interesting. Later, Taehyun is taken to the top players of Korea, the people who will be joining them in the games. As Taehyun enters, he sees all of Korea's representatives looking at him. Jung Jin Su, rank 7, notes that he is quite young. Seo Hong Gil, rank 8, says that this must be some kind of illegal. Kwok Siang, rank 4, tells them that it's enough. Age doesn't matter when it comes to skills. Park Sung Jin, currently ranked 3, expected him to come someday, but he didn't expect it to be so soon. The chairman sits in the main chair and tells him to have a seat, as they are about to begin the strategy meeting for the exhibition games. With everyone sitting down, Taewook begins explaining some things about the exhibition games. They first originated when the defenders of each Asian country grouped together back when the abyss was first discovered, and people awakened skills. It was a time of complete chaos when countless great monsters appeared. Now, it's a seven-day event in which the representative of their respective country freely fights monsters and converts them into points to reach the top. Since people fear monsters and demonic humans, they consider this event as a festivity, celebrating their demise. However, this is more like a war, as this will measure the power of each country and also generate goodwill from broadcasting the monster hunt. The winning country receives a massive prize pool, a very unique item, and the right to complete uncleared dungeons so this competition will be extremely fierce. Taehyun felt like it was a good idea to participate in this event, and it seems that he was right. The succubus queen, Rosaria, seems to know about the king's existence, but he cannot measure her strength yet, and can't expect her to spill such information with ease. He will have to get stronger to get it, much stronger in fact. That is why the Asian exhibition games are an opportunity for him, as fighting the strongest the world has, and even winning a prize is like a gold mine to him. Taewook notes that there's an issue with their team. Their top ranker is still missing, and other players like Quan and Ah Young are unable to participate due to personal matters. This has rendered their team much weaker than before, which they have to discuss. Sung Jin raises his hand and notes that this issue is solved, since there's a rumor that Taehyun has become a national level asset. Everyone is shocked by this, and they ask if it's true, with Taehyun calming them down, as it's just a rumor. They should not consider what is unproved while discussing plans, right? Everyone is disappointed, and they wonder what they are going to do, find someone else. The chairman gets up and notes that it's not a bad idea at all. Unlike Japan or China, they lack a national level player. But the exhibition games are no fight to the death. It's a hunt. If they play it calmly, they have a chance at winning. Sung Jin, Kwok Siang, and Seo Hang Gil each have a lot of abyss experience and can handle the monster well. Jin Su, who has a lot of anti-personnel experience, can help Taehyun hunt the demonic humans. With the plan made and the exhibition games in a week, the chairman wishes everyone the best of luck. That week comes and goes, with everyone gathered at the stadium to see the games. This is also where the opening ceremony for the games is taking place. The Philippines, Vietnam, Singapore, and all of the other countries have gathered to wait for entry. 
Among them, the strongest appear to be Japan and China, which have national force rank level players competing, like Ghostblade, real name Nakata Shinji. However, China has sent three national ranked players to compete and are expected to be the strongest. From right to left, Bloodblade Liu Feng, Super Speed Kai Ming Min, and the one in the middle is God Force Shei Xin. Taehyun's family watches all of this on their TV, with them thinking that Korea has no chance, although they hope that Taehyun is safe. His cousin suddenly screams at them. How can they lose hope when they should shout for his success until they cannot anymore? Have they forgotten everything he has done for them? He bought them this amazing house, and every time he wins big in a dungeon, he gives them tons of allowance. This means that the more Taehyun succeeds, the more he gains. The parents wonder where they went wrong for him to get so greedy, but he continues to shout for Taehyun. As he waits around, a woman approaches him, noting that he must be the youngest S rank in the Korean team. She really owes him for what he did at East Point. She was going to go there, but things had been resolved by the time she could arrive. This is the Holy Maiden, Yoshikawa Tsurara. Taehyun didn't expect her to have solved this incident if he hadn't intervened. That's why it was covered up like hell in his previous life. She notes that she sent him an invitation to properly thank him, so why did he refuse? As everyone left the meeting, the chairman stopped Taehyun to tell him something. He was invited by the Holy Maiden. Although he cannot be sure of her intentions, she has a hyper-regeneration ability, so she could help treat Kwan. He suggested that it shouldn't be bad for him to meet her before the games start, but Taehyun immediately refused. Taewook asked how he could be so heartless. Kwan gave his arm to protect him. The chairman calmed him down, as he wanted to see Taehyun's reasoning for the refusal. He said that he can't fully explain now, but the answer is simple. He knows of her true nature. She's a wretch hiding behind the facade of the Holy Maiden, something he also tells her now. After he leaves, Shinji comes around and asks how he fared, and Sarara notes that he's as expected. He didn't refuse her invitation for nothing. He knows something about her, but it's not time to act on him. Fools often only focus on his growth, but the most interesting thing about him is what he knows. He is constantly performing feats not possible with just strength. She also has no clue how he might have gotten such information on her. All that, to say that she cannot wait for the day he becomes her property. He will certainly be delicious. With the Asian games about to begin, Alex Go, a Singaporean a rank player and the official host, begins the countdown to the games. Everyone prepares in their own way. Some are just happy that they are about to shed some blood. When it comes to the Korean team, however, while Sung Jin tells everyone to get ready, he notices that Taehyun is nowhere to be found. Alex doesn't stop the timer, and just when he's about to begin the games, his head is chopped off by Taehyun, with everyone being shocked to see something like this. Almost immediately, the Chinese and Japanese teams try to jump him, with his teammates doing their best to stop the incoming attacks, creating an explosion of gigantic proportions. The Korean team managed to secure Taehyun, but Siang asks what's wrong with him. Has he lost his goddamn mind? Ghostblade suddenly starts laughing like a maniac, as they have no right to defend a killer from his punishment. The answer is clear. He will have to exterminate them one by one. Sarara tells him that he can kill all of them, but he should keep her property intact if he wants to leave. That's when Haley Tan, the chief of the Singaporean Player Association, tells them to stop, as they will handle the situation. The chairman tries to calm her down, noting that one of their representatives would never do something like that. But she already saw what he did. He killed a man in cold blood. Everyone saw. Is that not enough evidence? Before she can command his arrest, Taehyun says something that grabs their attention. Demonic human, Wan Kai. A few years ago, on a luxury cruise, this S-rank demonic human tortured and murdered over 30 passengers. The associations and corporations placed a bounty of 3 million on his head, but he got away, profiting heavily from the information he got out of his victims. What he actually did was change his appearance. Haley asks what that has to do with this situation, but her eyes widen as she sees Alex's head. Taehyun says that Kai managed to shake off the search on him because he had a skill that allowed him to change appearance, just like he did today. Everyone is shocked when they see the true identity of Alex. Taehyun notes that they should thank the Nightwalkers for this information, while everyone wonders how such a thing is possible. Another demonic human looks at Taehyun with great attention, as he finds him very interesting. Additionally, the Korean team is the first to score a thousand points. Due to the death of the host, which was thought to be murder at first, the games commence instantly and every country has begun its hunt. Taehyun was the first to score in this event, and has given credit to the Nightwalkers. Ah Young's assistant didn't expect her to know something like this, but she really doesn't, and she also doesn't know why Taehyun lied. She is quite grateful honestly, but all of the calls they are getting are about to overload their systems. Since this is not how the association does things, this must be done independently by their Taehyun. What could their darling be doing? Somewhere in the city, Taehyun takes care of a bunch more demonic humans, 
and receives a call from Ah Young, who almost takes his ear off. He notes that she's late, with her noting that they almost died because of how busy they were. Taehyun hopes that this call is through a secure line, which Ah Young already expected he wanted. He wanted to chat with her. Taehyun notes that he just can't make secure calls through the phone and says that he wants two favors from her. First, he wants some information on demonic humans, and second, she has to look into something. Ah Young explains that they gave him enough information through the association, but Taehyun notes that catching small fry like these guys will not win them the games. If they want to win, they must go after bigger fish. The target he would most enjoy would be the malignant guild. As soon as he says that, a man stops in front of him, identifying himself as Kimura Ken. Taehyun didn't expect to meet someone here and asks what he wanted. Ken screams out at him. He is here to punish him for tarnishing the name of the Righteous Holy Maiden. Taehyun doesn't have a clue about what he just said and is quite confused. Thank you for watching. See you next time.